Hi and welcome to Random Access, it's AMD Threadripper Day. We're going to build a system with AMD's new high-end processor. I'm Matthew Buzzy from PC Mag. This is John Bierick, Editor-in-Chief of Computer Shopper. John, we have a lot of parts here today. Yeah, we certainly do. Um, yeah, we uh, spent a bit, uh, bit of time last week uh, with AMD getting briefed on their new Threadripper processors, and what we received in the mail shortly afterwards was this whole uh, <laughs> panoply, uh, yeah, panoply uh, of uh, high-end hardware. So Threadripper's here. We are going to do an unboxing of the chip which uh, we have over here, and we basically have more or less the best of everything to uh, Top, put together a system you know, based stuff. on this um, extremely cool processor. Yeah, so run through processor side, we'll obviously get to that. Uh, what components are sort of going to make up this high-end build? Right, so um, what we have here, um, this is a uh, case from a company called either Mean It or Mean IT, depending on what you want to refer to it as. Brands. Called, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's called the 5PM. It's a glass side of case. Um, it's going to show off all the Threadripper and AMD hardware really uh, yeah, nicely. Yeah, two nice tempered glass sides. Mm -hmm. Nice and sleek, simple. Um, this motherboard, less simple. Yes, this is, a, uh, this is a very high-end um, ASUS motherboard, which basically has everything you could possibly want. It's got a 10 gig Ethernet card, supports Threadripper, obviously, and a whole host of stuff, which we'll go through in excruciating detail as we yeah. do this build. I think this, alongside the processor, we have the most to say about this motherboard has a ton of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, an M.2 SSD. Yep, yeah, and NVMe PCI Express SSD, pretty much um, as good as they come. So mm -hmm. that'll be our boot drive. Um, Very cool. What else we got over here? The, of course, the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti. Because uh, why not? Almost uh, as good as you can get. Uh, right. Super, super high in performance. Yeah, the, um, the timing on this did not quite mesh with AMD's uh, new Vega mm -hmm. um, video card, so we're going to use the 1080 Ti. If we were doing this a week later, we might have you know, included that in there, double, but for now double we're double AMD. Right, yeah, but that's what we're going to work with today, and certainly sure. no, uh, no apologies needed there for a 1080 of Ti. Uh, and to power all of this, Yep, we've How got many eight. watts we need, John? Uh, well, this is a 1200. That should give us a little bit to spare. Um, Always good. Yeah, 1200 is probably more what you need if you're doing two cards. Sure, and SLI. Sure. We're only going to do one for today because nobody wants to sit here for three hours while we <laughs> figure it all out. Uh, but, no, uh, SLI is always so easy. Yeah, so we're going to just go with one card, um, and the Threadripper uh, parts themselves are uh, a little bit power sure. hungry. So. And um, on the color, the color adding side, we have both... RGB RAM mm -hmm. yep. and um, an RGB cooler. Yeah, the RGB RAM is from G-Skill. This is some um, uh, multicolor programmable RAM. Yeah. There's also two packs of it there, you'll notice, because we're going to do a quad-channel memory. I've seen this in action in systems before. Uh, it's It looks really really fancy once it's up, up and running. Oh, no. Yeah. And the Thermaltake uh, liquid cooler. Yes, yeah, so we've also got a... Uh, or not Thermaltake, sorry. Yeah, no, that... Yes, it oh, is it is Thermaltake. Thermaltake. Yes, it's a, um, called the Flow 360. It's um, a very high-end liquid cooler that we're going to attach to the inside of this case. Got color-changing lights. It's really awesome. High-end stuff. Um, and then just, you know, some yeah, thermal yeah. paste and some uh, traditional hard drives. Yeah, some, just for uh, scratch disks, if we're going to be doing uh, video editing or anything of that sort. Um, that's the idea behind Threadripper, sure. is that you're going to use this only if you are, say, a uh, video editor, a gamer who does a lot of stuff while they're doing other mm -hmm. media sort of work. Yeah, so yeah a lot of multi multitask heavy. If you're yeah. doing simple stuff, you don't need Threadripper. Yeah, I mean, the term that AMD has been using is actually megatasking. Which megatasking. Is, it's like multitasking isn't enough, apparently, no. to push this thing. So Those aren't truly the high-end users. Right. Yeah, I mean, for folks who are doing basically like video editing and then streaming while they're gaming and then... Um, converting a stream while they're doing all that. Sure. These people exist, and this is going to be their system. Yeah, and most people, there's definitely a point where it tops out, but some people, the more the better. You can't yeah. have enough, can enough uh, speed. So. Yeah, great for Minesweeper, too. So. Perfect for Minesweeper. Yeah, so we're going to um, clear off the table here, yeah. and um, first things first is get the Threadripper chip out. It's got some pretty ridiculous packaging yeah. that we would like to show off, so we're going to start clearing the space over here to do that. Um, so we received a, uh, a flight case, actually, from AMD, um, once we uh, visited with them last week, and it came with you know a uh, bunch of hardware and the chips themselves. So we're just going to move these things out of the way here. Drives, storage. Yep. Okay. Get our Paste. 1080 Ti out of the way Let's and make room for. All right. All right. What it's all up. about in this ridiculous case. All right. Which is exponentially larger than the product itself inside. <laughs> obviously. Well, let, we'll see when we open it up. Let's see. We've got a couple of catches here. Steam yeah, I kind of want steam. We need some light out. effects, I think. Yeah. All right, the grand S unveil. So what we have here, two Threadripper processors. Now, if you buy this from Newegg or Amazon, you know, once it hits on um, August 10th, you're not going to get the flight case. You're oh, not going to get the, light, the, the crazy light up stuff underneath. There's actually a light in here, which I think didn't activate at first. But oh, yeah, there it goes. In any case, ah, there it goes. So in any case, it's a uh, pretty deluxe uh, set of packaging here. We also here have a, uh, a customized uh, Threadripper chip in Lucite, which I'm going to pull out. Um, there we go. 
It's actually, you generally do not get the Threadripper chip with your corporate logo on it. Here we have Computer Shopper. But um, as you can see, this is bigger than any processor uh, you've ever seen before, unless you're in the habit sure. of messing around with server chips. So uh, we're going to put that back in its holder. Serious business. Right. Oh, actually, hold that a moment. Oh, this sorry. is actually a uh, multi-piece affair very here. Com very complicated. There we go. Put the All lid right. on. I feel like these are like the nuclear codes or something. Yeah, it's I know. Very serious business. All right, you got the suitcase, right, Matt? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pull one of these guys out. And okay. <laughs> Which one did we get? <laughs> So we have a Threadripper 1920X. And? You want to pull that one over there? Yeah. Okay. All right. That one is mm. the, what does the sticker say on the side? Da, 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 1950X. 1950X. So that's the highest end. That's a 16 core 32 thread chip over there. And this one is one step down. 999, 799. Um, if you're looking for a very serious multi-core processor, these yeah. are your chips. There's also a eight core version of it, which will be 549, which you don't have here yet, and will actually be released um, a little later. Th these are hitting on um, uh, August 10th. The mm -hmm. others are hitting on August 31st. So yeah, so we got the 1950X here. You want to bust it open, Matt? I want to I get inside. It says RIP here, very on brand. Satisfying sound. Yeah, I know. It just cost you $1,000 to do that, you know? Oh, man. It's the most expensive turn I've ever done. This is an uh, interesting, it's in a little, little turbine box. Unlock the power, it says, so I'll do so. Uh, and it lifts away. All hey, right. hey. That's definitely the coolest way I've opened. Yeah, processors, uh, processor openings don't come any cooler than that. They really don't. Here, hmm. take, it, take this the rest of the way. Oh, all right. Okay, I'm not quite sure what to do here, actually. It looks, yeah, yeah it's, so, uh, so we're it's going. Mounted, it's mounted yeah, it's, on, a, on yeah, some so, sort of pedestal. Yeah, so there's a, um, a frame here, which I'm going to. Undo. Gently un undo. Un yeah. yeah, and I was warned that there's a, like an orange mounting frame here. Which, Every one of these needs like a Yeah, I mean, you could like do the sound steam. effects. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Let's see. All right, so I think that must be this. Let's see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There we go. That's what we're talking about. So this piece here, actually, when you will see when we install the chip, goes into the frame on the motherboard and doesn't get removed, which is unlike any other processor we've ever seen. So here we go. I'm going to flip it around. You can take a look at the uh, die on the back and the contacts. So there we have it. That's your Threadripper uh, processor. Now that's actually not all there is to this package. So I'm going to put this back in the frame because mm -hmm. it's feeling very exposed right about now, yeah, I suspect. So let's put it back Every home. moment it's out, it's tense. <laughs> so we're going to put that aside for the moment. And um, the rest of the goodies are in the bottom, I think. Right, so let's turn this around. What do we got here? We've got, um, I'm actually not entirely sure what that is. Installation instructions, instructions and Woo! obligatory sticker. Of course. Um, now this Never is interesting. Never leave home without it. There you go. Now this may be uh, a first, or not maybe a first, it is a first. Torque wrench. So um, the Ryzen chips come with a torque wrench, which we're going to use to install the chips onto the processor. Uh, excuse me, just call the processor onto the motherboard. There's uh, some torque screws there, and this will actually make sure that you use the proper uh, amount of pressure when you're turning it. They help them help you. Yes. Last thing is a mounting frame. Of course. So this here um, is an interesting uh, bit of metal because there are basically no coolers on the market right now that support <laughs> Threadripper. And what this enables... Um, existing coolers to do is to lock in and turn, and most liquid coolers that are made on the market are made by a company called Azotech. This is actually compatible with uh, their uh, pump design or the, the head that goes over the processor. So we'll get into that later when we um, get the motherboard going. Smart backwards compatibility sort yeah. of Yeah, well, addition. I think what it was was they wanted to make sure that um, they could get this onto market fast enough and not have to wait for, for um, other coolers made specifically for this. Right. There yeah. are some coming, but uh, sure. there's that. So we're just going to shove all this back in the box for yeah, a moment. All right, because there are going to be a lot of parts floating around here very soon. So, John, the core of any good PC build is, of course, the motherboard. Right. Houses yeah. all your component needs. Mm -hmm. um, what have we chosen as our sort of base for this entire operation? Right, so it doesn't get much more high-end than this one. Um, this is um, based on the X399 chipset. Um, X399 is a chipset that's required for Threadripper. It's new. It mm -hmm. um, hasn't um, appeared in any uh, previous AMD chip line. So this is um, ASUS's um, high-end board, the ROG Zenith Extreme. Um, Extreme. Extreme. It's not only the Zenith, it's the Zenith Extreme. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open this up over here. Now, this board is... I believe 699. So you're looking at a uh, 
you know, fairly high-end piece of hardware here. And Matt, if you could be so kind as to put, um, there's a piece of bubble wrap under here, if you could lay it out so we can be kind to our board. Thank you. So we're gonna put the board out over here. Um, so. Ta-da. There it is. Um, there is a lot of stuff in this box. Um, so I'm gonna just start unpacking the necessities for now. There's a lot of slots now. on this board. There certainly is. Um, so let's take a look in here. Of course, um, oh, well, the most important thing. Don't leave home without your stickers. You gotta have your ROG stickers. So <laughs> Republic of Gamers, I mean, Do you not know, yeah, there, there's enough there for your car, for your Seriously, shirt, you know, your forehead. For, for your your pet. I mean, you're all set there. ROG. And then we're opening up the uh, accessories kit over here. A um, lot of stuff in here. Um, most importantly, besides the stickers, is the coaster, the ROG coaster. Gotta have your beverage. Gotta have your beverage, yep. This is a, a rail for supporting your video card. We'll need that later. Sure. A um, lot Maybe of other stuff here. I won't go now. through every little piece that's in here, um, but I'm gonna take out the parts that we're gonna use. Sure. Um, we actually have a, um, a 10 gigabyte ethernet card, which is part of the kit there. I don't know if anybody has 10 gigabyte. If you do, God bless. That yeah, is, uh, there you go. Some speedy, some but that is internet. as cutting edge as it comes. Um, we're gonna put this out. This is um, a mount for M2 drives, which we'll get which into is later. Which we're using. Yep, um, and that one is uh, gonna be used. We're gonna take out these two SATA cables. We can put those with the hard drives and we'll need them later. Um, what do we have here? This is a thermal sensor, which uh, depending on um, how long this build takes, we may install or may leave may it for not. another day. Sure. Right. Um, this is a fan controller, which I don't believe we're gonna be using in this build, so let's keep it in the box for now. Um, um, SLI bridges galore. You can hook up any possible combination of multiple well, video cards. We're doing a single card build, so. Right, so those stay in the box. Um, those go in the, the dust drawer, you know, the dusty drawer. Um, this is for case lighting. We're not gonna use that. And then we're gonna take these uh, these out. We're definitely gonna use these, or one of these. These are uh, Wi-Fi antennas mm -hmm. for the built-in Wi-Fi on the board. Gotta have your internet. Gotta have that. And there's a bunch of screws in here. Oh, we're definitely gonna need this. This is the uh, connector for the front panel um, wires. Sure. So keep that in a safe place if you would. There's a lot of screws in here. Maybe we'll have to go back in the box later for The most them. difficult part of this build is gonna be finding all these components when we need them. Yeah, there is that. Yeah, there, um, there are a lot, and there's still some that's in the, the box. That's the fun of PC builds. <laughs> there is that. It's keeping track of all the stuff. <laughs> so what are we gonna do first? Um, oh, I, so many options. Yeah, well, let's get, the, let's get the Threadripper chip in the board. That's probably a good start. And um, seeing as neither of us has ever installed one of these chips before, this will be an adventure. Come on this journey come with in, us. Come, come with us. So let's see. Yes. Oh. Which uh, one are we using here? What are we going so, for? Um, yeah, so we're going to put the 1950X. This is the high-end 999, 16 core, 32 thread Threadripper in the Decent board. performance. Yeah, it'll be all right, you it'll know. Okay. So, um, sort of your low-end web browsing system here. <laughs> so what we need to do, from what I understand from AMD explaining this to us, is um, these three screws on the board here are going to need to be removed with um, a special wrench that they've provided. Sure. So if you uh, root around in the uh, box there, I think it's actually in the... In the oh, it's uh, in, yeah, this, in the, in this the turbine part. crate. Yeah, there we go. Um, right next to the socket bracket. Yeah, if you would like to, uh, you want to get those uh, slots, uh, no, excuse me, the screws uh, free. Let's, uh, let's go So to this, is a, this is a torque wrench, actually, that they provided. This isn't just a regular Torx TORX wrench, but a Torque TORQ. It's not your papa's wrench. No, it is not. So um, it's basically um, designed to, yeah, I think that might be free. Might be, let's yeah. see. The idea is that once you um, are tightening it down, it'll only let you tighten it so far. Sure. Yeah. As do not damage or warp the bracket. Mm-hmm. I think that is also good. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's one more on the top. Yeah. So I'm going to take this out in the meantime. Um, so we have the, the thread ripper tip on this sort of orange carrier, which I suppose the design is to keep dun, you from touching dun, the contacts dun, on the bottom. Dun, dun, dun. All right, it's open. So the instructions that I was given were to leave the black plate down here in place until the very last moment. So I see a clear plate, so I'm going to lift that off. Moment. The very last second. Let's see. Well, we're going to put this down someplace safe. Someplace nice and safe. Yeah, and um, see how to release this. Slide the external cap before sliding the carrier frame with CPU. Okay, so we're going Count to do the external that. Cap. All right, we're not going to force anything here because the last thing you want to do, do is use excessive force on a yep. $600, $700 motherboard. There we go. I think we have it. All right, so that is that. And I believe that you this- You can slide that out. Yeah, once that's free. It seems to be the suggestion. It comes up. Yep, yeah, it seems to be stuck on something. Let's see. Don't wanna bend the frame. There, there we, we go. go. All right, so put that aside. Now, as for Senor Threadripper, we're going to 
like surgery. Yeah, slide this into the frame like Keeping so. Keeping it in this little nice holder. Right, okay. Okay, we've got that in the carrier there. It came out of the track. There we go. That did not work. Let's try it again. Redux. Okay, one more time. Actually, you know what? I am wondering if it... Yes, I see now. Bear in mind that this is the first time any of us here have handled one of these, so we're learning as you are. I think that, that, uh, oh, that screw's going to rock it. Yeah, yeah so that's right. In the way. All right, so let's get this down the channel here. Okay. I'm trying not to touch the bottom of the chip. There we go. That's, that's more like it. Well, no, it isn't. Hmm. Complicated. That's it. There we go. Okay, so I'm doing a test to fit that ride. Okay, so now this is the moment of truth where we're going to take the black frame off the uh, bottom here. Now, if you look in there, you're going to see that there are 4,000 plus pins. A lot and of pins. Yes, and that's why you want to get this right the first time because you don't want to be in there when a pair of tweezers trying to straighten them out. That's kind of a, a nightmare. Every, yeah. That's the nightmare scenario when you're building. Right, so we're going to put that down. I'll locked start in nicely, them. and I will hold that in place, and you can start tightening. Now, you're going to tighten it to a certain point, and then it's going to click, and that will be the... Uh, I appreciate the precautionary measure. Oh, it kind of just kind of just came to a stop. All right. Just tighten up. Okay. And the final. Of course, normally a one-man job, so mm -hmm. I hope you're hope you're feeling up to it. Yeah, this is definitely a case where you hire your neighborhood teenager to walk you through if you are uncomfortable this with this. It's kind of spinning. I'm All not right, sure if let it's me in see. the groove. Yeah, I think it might not be in. Uh, All right, so let me uh, just take a quick peek here. So um, Matt's going to turn it until it clicks. Yep, there you go. We've got the torque, so there's number two. I think my fingers are no longer necessary. Yes. So yeah, the idea here is that you don't over or under tighten the, uh, the screws. Once you get it to a point where it's... Uh, um, pretty firm. You go a little bit further than you think is necessary, and then it'll click. So, uh, wow, well, that's quite a bit of screwing in we yeah. have to do there. Let's see. Really, really tight. All yeah, right. it's still going. It's still there going. We go. There we go. That's a click. All right. And number three. Got so to yes. make sure your chip's secure. You know, yeah, the, you know the old saying. <laughs> there is that. Yeah, the um, um, size Perfect. of this die is much bigger than any other that uh, you've seen before you know we've seen before and oh, yeah. as we'll see when we put the cooler on here it actually isn't going to cover the whole die so um, with that in mind there's a bracket that came in the box with this and let's put that on now um, that there is for the CPU cooler yeah I got it it's wedged it's wedged real good all right so yeah the, the um, hey there it is so um, this is going to go on the four mounting points there. Now, from what I understand, they're asymmetrical, um, so you probably need to like test fit it. Well, I guess yeah, sure. that's, that looks pretty easy yeah. to. There's basically a there's wide side. There's two that are wide and two that are farther apart, and it very clearly matches up to the. Uh, yep. The whole there thing. There we go. Here. Right. So we can finger tighten them now if it'll let us. If not, we'll have to get a screwdriver. So it's not quite in. I think it looks. Yeah, it looks like finger. Uh, yeah. Like finger screws. All right. We'll start with that. Oh, it has an order too, so I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. So one, so we start with one. That one's in a bit. Then he's, yeah, the opposite, the old opposite side. Sure. Rule here, where. And three. So it's three. Otherwise, one side will be too low. Yep. Okay, and then four. four. And these are only uh, finger tight. We'll come in with a screwdriver later and get this uh, really? tight Lock them in, yeah. We may have to actually back it off so we can put the cooler on later sure. and uh, put the thermal paste on it. So there we go. So we've got the um, the CPU stuff all installed over here. Um, and that's all. Your computer's ready to go. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, let's go get, get a beer. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. yeah, there you go. Thread yeah. up or done. Right. Congratulations, us. <laughs> there we go. So next thing we're going to be putting in is the RAM. So if you want to fish around for the RAM over there, we can uh, put those in. Where did I leave my... I left my RAM in my other pants. Oh, dear. Just there kidding. We go. I got it. I got Car it cargo pants, clearly. A little, a little gag for you. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So let's pop them out. Let's see what we have here. So actually, you know what, I'm going to let you pop them out. I'm going to go get the manual because it, this is um, one of the rare times when you really should be looking at the manual. Brand new tech, you don't want to mess anything up. Yeah, well, when you're talking about RAM configurations, it's depending on the board can uh, depend on uh, how the channels are allocated. So you'd really need to look at the manual to see where the, right. the memory should go. Now with And we have all this RAM because this, has this, this motherboard has a capability to do four channel, right? Yes, right, so. quad channel, right. So with um, previous uh, AMD stuff, you were looking at dual channel memory configuration. Here, quad channel, you could do with either four or eight. 
uh, memory dims. So we have four identical ones here, each of them eight gigs. And we're going to take a look in the manual here to see where they should go. OK, so here's how it looks. First, I don't know if our uh, camera first, person would like to come in and take, mm -hmm. a, take a quick peek at the, uh, the RAM configuration. But if you're putting four in, um, we're going to use the diagram that's on the end over here. So what it says there is uh, DIM A1, B1, C1, and D1 are going to be receiving the, the chips. So we need to look on the board and see where those are. So A1 through D1. D1, D2, C1, and C2. And then A1, A2, B1, B2. So it looks like they're the, the gray as opposed to the black. Indeed. Right. So why don't we uh, snap those in. Um, we'll open up the catches on the end of the slots. There we go. It's only one side on these. Yeah, I see that. And uh, yeah, match up the... Uh, on the bottom of each RAM chip, there's a small notch, which lines up with a uh, notch in the uh, the actual DIMM slot. Yeah. So Matt's... Uh, Got it backwards here. All right. I think. No. Mm, no, you had it. I had it. Yeah, that's the right thing. You trusted the old gut. Yeah, sometimes... Yeah, so sometimes you got to use a little more force than you would think. Yeah, for sure. RAM, sometimes you really got to get in there. Um, but no, the catch went up, so we're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, there's only catches on one side of this RAM. So um, some, some boards have catches on both sides, and one or the other may not go up. Easy. I definitely had to push harder than that on some other boards. In right. The past. That was pretty easy. You can, you can go G-skill. Oh, put it right next to my RG stickers. There you go. Literally. Over there. <laughs> uh, going in again here. All right. So let's see. So much RAM. What to do with all this RAM. What to do with all this RAM. So yeah, the RGB uh, portion is along the top edge here. There's some clear yeah, plastic. Yeah, this whole white thing. It can do multicolor stretch. It can be all in stretch. It kind of can fade from one color to another. It can do all sorts of interesting, fun lighting. Which is really why anyone builds a high-end system, right? Is to put the fancy lighting? Yeah, there's a lot of lighting uh, options going on with this board, which we'll get into later. Um, it actually supports something called um, ASUS's Aura Sync, which is a... Um, a SUS-specific um, lighting scheme that lets you coordinate lighting between different devices that support uh, Aura Sync. Um, and that, in software, you can, uh, you know, do all sorts of crazy programming. So I'll do the, uh, the check to make sure they're all in place. Looking good. Looking good. All right, so we got the RAM in place. Easiest part of the build. Right. So <laughs> let's clean up the uh, the RAM mess here yeah. and uh, get our uh, space clear. All right, next thing we're going to tackle is the SSD. And this is where it'll get a little complicated. So um, let's see. Put this Keep over here. Space clear a bit. All right. We have a uh, bunch of stuff here from Threadripper. Um, put that over here. OK. So that stuff over there, somewhere in that bunch of um, materials. Uh, let's see. Keep doing that. Which one do we want? Uh, the one in your left hand. Yeah, yeah that's it. So. The M.2 hub. The M.2 hub. So this board uses something that you don't generally see on other motherboards. Um, because it's trying to accommodate this enormous chip and all the other features on it, there's not a lot of room for uh, M.2 drives. Um, and M.2 drives are solid state drives that usually lay flat on the board. And, um, they're big. Yep. And uh, they're about the size of a gum stick. And, uh, you know, will... Uh, you know, provide for your storage. The problem here is, of course, Threadripper die is huge, and there is one M2 slot underneath this heat sink here. Um, we could take off the heat sink and put it in there, but we're going to actually try something we've never tried before, um, which is... Kind of a running theme, really. Yeah, the ROG DIM.2 card. So what is this thing? Um, basically, it's a, uh, a sort of a riser or an extension board that lets you put multiple M2 drives on a card and have them be... Um, mounted vertically. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to put a lot of drives like that on the board, you'd have to lay them flat, and it would be taking the place of other components right. here. So, so yeah, uh, not only does it uh, remove the inconvenience of having to remove this and do that, it gives you more slots for them, essentially. Right. So, win -win. so Yeah, but everybody who looks at this board, myself included the first time, is like, why are why there, is there why, an extra dim slot? Why is there an extra dim slot? It says dim.2. So um, that's what this is. So we're going to put that in here, but we're just going to do it temporarily, um, just to show off how it fits. Um, let's see. It's got a nice cutout for the slot. Yeah, there's a um, there's sort of a notch on the end that goes with this piece of metal yeah. over here. So we're going to put that in place, snap it down just to get an idea of what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that's your DIM.2. So what we need to do first is mount the SSD on the DIM.2 slot, uh, DIM.2 card. 
So let's see, we have one M2. And so I'm trying to figure which side it should go on. That's a good question. A lot of labels so, on this thing. So I will tell you what, if you want to get the SSD from the pile there, the Samsung box, I'm going to look in the manual and see which side Please. of the card this thing needs to go on. We can learn so much in this manual. There it's just, it's trying to teach us. It's trying so hard. So let's see, dim.2, where are you? Oh, oh, oh. oh, fell out of its little box here. M2 installation, page 2-10. This is so tiny. There we go. The magic of NVMe. There we are, so that's our hard, that's gonna be our boot hard drive. Um, now, we're gonna take a look through the manual here and see where the... This is again the uh, 960 Pro from Samsung. So. Right, yeah, that's a um, yeah, PCI Express NVMe drive. Um, very, very fast throughput. Um, the question is, is should we wing it and put it on Side one, because there's a like a slot one, slot sure. two. I mean, one sounds like uh, a good bet. If, if I, we, I would think so. Yeah, if we guess wrong, it just won't boot. That's, right. all. That's so, all. Oh, dim installation. Let's see. Maybe it's under dim. Hey. So I know it's fascinating to watch me flip through the manual True. here, but uh, that's part of any build. As is winging it at some point. Uh, yes, you're so just, almost definitely going to guess on something. Right, pressing something too hard, or just plugging something in, and saying, "Yeah, it looks yeah, like it fits." It fits enough. Yeah. So there's that. You know when something doesn't fit correctly you right can, you can tell yeah you either get a cracking sound or when you boot up a puff of smoke so those are you know, those <laughs> are things we're, signs yeah those are the things we're aiming to avoid with this platform yeah well ideally. i don't see the, the dim dot two business in here so you know what let's let's uh, flip let's a coin 50 50 yeah. i mean and maybe it works on both sides maybe so let's see so the, what, is your, the what does your gut tell you john my gut tells me side one and on the actual dim two here let me turn it up right so the uh, camera can make it out um m2 to be one M2 underscore two socket, and then on the other side, uh, whoop, let's flip it over. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, M2 one socket. So we're going to use this side. So let's put this down over here. I'm going to go dig in the box for the screws because this takes a uh, very small screw. Let's see. Now this isn't really what you really don't need a camera to capture this. You need a microscope because um, <laughs> these screws these are, are tiny screws. Yeah, those are kind of the bane of our existence around here when we test M2 drives because um, very easy to lose them. Very difficult to find a screwdriver that fits their head. We will take our chances though with well, that's not it. We're going through our kit here. These really never cease to amaze. These M.2 drives. They're so they're so small. It's right. Crazy. It's really uh, jump obviously from HDD to an SSD. Already impressive. These things are just are just insane. How much does this run, John? Usually, uh, uh, depends uh, on the capacity. M.2 dot like this. Uh, well, it depends on the capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the 256, and uh, I'll probably uh, get this wrong, but I believe the 256 um, megabyte capacities are roughly small park 250 to 300 dollars. So I'm guessing that's probably in the uh, 400 dollar range. Yeah, that's a lot. And if you're ever building a system, if you're not building it yourself, if you're ordering a system, you'll see how much more. Um, Money adding a higher SSD amount adds to your system. It's, oh yeah, it scales like crazy. Even if you want to go from two fifty six to five twelve, it's like four hundred, five hundred dollars sometimes. Yep, pretty mm -hmm. nuts. Yeah, it's a uh, that's definitely one of your uh, your biggest uh, costs beyond the CPU oh, yeah. and the motherboard. But meanwhile, you get now giant hard drives in budget systems. You get like a terabyte a hard drive on on not very expensive systems. So yeah, I mean a four ter you can get a four terabyte desktop drive for a little more than a hundred dollars these days. So it's, it's, pretty, it's yeah. pretty crazy. That's good. Yeah. So I'm uh, meanwhile just. Uh, uh, Trying to get these tiny screws out of this As you said, bag. The, truly the bane of, of builders' existence. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna bring this over here. You don't mind. Wink. All right. Put the... This is, feels like the most surgery-like part of this yet. I yeah, feel like we need the, tiny tools. Yeah, we that we have. We have a uh, really excellent uh, toolkit here loaned by one of my colleagues, which has Perfect. every tip known to man. Um, highly recommended for a build like this. So we're going to... There are two parts of this screw. There's a sort of a receptacle and a uh, and the actual screw. So we're gonna put, I'm actually gonna take the drive out first. Put it in the receptacle. Put the, excuse me, put the receptacle in the, uh, in the board. You know what, that'll be easier if I put the screwdriver down, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it. But. That's totally fine. I mean, I've built a lot of systems in my day, but I am not, Always the most adept right. with tools. All right. Stay put for the camera here. So you can see what's right. happening. So we're snapping in the drive. And now the drive has a place yeah. to go down. That's very clever. And mount. Now, the tiny, tiny screw here. So small. So small. Let's see if we can get it in. All right. See if nobody, we nobody breathes too heavily. Right, no sneezing. All right, first try. What do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm, hopeful. I'm hopeful. Hey, look at that. 
We did it. All oh, right. No hands. All right. So we've got our boot drive on the uh, Dim Dot Two card, and I'm touching the connectors on the bottom, which is not recommended. Don't do that. Don't do. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do as we say. Not as try, we do. Try the yes. Do not try this at home. So unfortunately, you won't be able to see the drive once we install it. So take one last good look at it. Bye. Uh, bye. And we're going to snap that into the slot over here. A little complicated, but pretty painless in the end. Yeah. I mean. It's those tiny screws. I mean, I yeah. think if you had a magnetic screwdriver, it would be easier, but you don't really want to use a magnetic For screwdriver sure. around a lot of the stuff here. So it's just, uh, bam. Hey, went in. All right. So there we go. So we've got our boot drive and RAM installed. We've got the CPU installed and the mount installed. Um, where do we go from here? Oh, which right. component is your next favorite? All right, well, let's clean the table a bit. And, yeah, uh, we'll I mean, figure I guess out we what's keep next. Space. We don't need this drive box anymore. That. Put this over here. All right. All right, I'm just gonna go down to the, the motherboard box over here. The motherboard box has so many goodies in it. Right, I think can't we, stress enough how many connectors and things were up in this board. Right, so what we're gonna do now is um, get out the case and get ready to start mounting things in the case. So we're gonna move this over. All I'll right. grab the, the 5 p.m. case from Mean It. Right, so this is a, a chassis with um, tempered glass sides. And that's always fun to work with because tempered glass is Glass. Glass. It's so pretty, it's shiny, it's delicate, and, it, and uh, it will break. It's fingerprint central. Yes, it is that. So both sides of this case have glass on it, which I find a little curious because usually one side of the case is where you hide all your cables. You don't really right. want to uh, see what's on the right side usually of a case because that's where you put all your, your sins. Yeah, and, I, I and guess in this, in this instance, yeah. if you're building a nice high-end build, they want you to put your lights, your, your case lights, your fan lights, your cooler lights, whatever it is. Uh, they want you to be able to display it on either side. Mm -hmm. I guess if you have a mess, you'd put it against a wall, you'd mm -hmm. hide it. So, right. so they give you options. There is that. So I would uh, say that even though this is transparent, this side of the case, most of what you're going to be looking at is going to be on this side. So what we're going to do, though, is uh, take the left side off. These, we, pr uh, we have to confess, we're going to turn this a bit so yeah. it can be seen. There we go. Um, we pre-loosened um, these. And I'm going to come around the front here um, just to grab the plexiglass. Whoops. And um, we can unscrew these. Car but of course, carefully. Yeah. So we'll take off the two bottom ones first. OK. I've got it. All right. All right. I trust you. All right. Okay. One more turn there. Okay. I'll take that away. Okay. Bye. I will be ah, be back. As it says, handle with care. And look, an empty case. There we go. That's now what I realize is we're probably gonna have to take off the other side too because all the parts for the motherboard that we're gonna need for mounting are probably in a box in the Buried bottom the shroud there. there. Yeah. So let's turn this around. Okay. And I'll. Uh, we're gonna need a, I think we're gonna need a screwdriver for this, because this one I did not pre-loosen. Um, oh, oh man. Yeah, so I'm gonna hit another uh, toolkit here. You can get these out without. Are they good? Yeah, okay, a couple hand, of them were. They're hand screws. All right. Let's give it a try. You got one out. All right. Not much easier than this to open a case, really, so. There we go. That's the good news. Final, the final one. The final oh, and if one. you need just a reminder, handle care. I will not forget. Ready, set, it's got it. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, of all right. Every builder's favorite, an empty case. Okay. So here we are. Um, let's find the parts awesome. that we need. Um, let's turn this a little bit. There could be a cardboard box somewhere wedged it's, in there. Sitting, it's. I'll tell you where it is. It's chilling in the. Uh, oh, the drive bay. The drive bay. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can get that out at your leisure. Let me take a quick look at the back of this case here. So just a quick introduction to what's here. Um, it looks like you can mount. Um, you turn it a bit back towards the camera. Um, it looks like you can mount an SSD back here. This is the back side of the case. Actually, you can mount um, three SSDs here. One, two, three. You can mount uh, hard drives down here. It looks like two three and a half inch hard drive bays. I'm sure you could probably also put SSDs in those bays if you preferred to. But this side of the case we're going to ignore mostly for the moment. Um, I'm just going to clear some of these cables out of the way. And we're going to lay the case down so we can start putting the motherboard inside. We've got lots of screws. That we have. And cable ties. All right. For your organizing convenience. So let's see. So um, I'm going to lay the case like this. If um, our camera folks think we should rotate it a different direction, let me know. Um, but we're going to uh, leave it like this for the moment. I think that should um, that should suffice now. Um, 
Nicely, nicely labeled bags of screws, which they don't always do. Oh, wow, that's yeah, actually quite that's good. That's very nice. All right, thank you, Mean IT, or Mean P It. It says PSU. It says yeah. motherboard. It says 2.5 HD. And yeah, usually you, just get a, usually you just get a bag of those all together. And you have to guess, together. and you're like, yep. this looks like a three and a half inch screw. I don't right. know. Yeah, and then you put half of them in, and then you realize they're not the right ones. Yeah. Take them out again, it's, and so on. That's sometimes the worst part. So this is much appreciated. Right, okay, great. So I'm going to turn this a little bit to the, in this direction, to make it a little easier to, uh, access and also for our camera folks to see. Um, so usually the first thing you do when you're putting a motherboard in a case is to mount uh, what's called the I.O. plate, which mm -hmm. goes into this space here. And it's basically a piece of metal that um, uh, lets show the ports on the back of the, the motherboard. Now, right. this, this is the first motherboard I've ever seen. I'm sure it's not the only one in existence. It's kind has, of built in there. It's built into it, so you actually don't have to um, install a separate plate. I it's just there. That. It feels like it, it always feels like a little bit of a silly step to yeah. have to kind of manually put that thing in the gap. So. There is that. Although interestingly, I've never seen a I/O plate which requires <laughs> a Protective, mask over it to be removed. Sticker. So I guess um, hmm, I'm not quite sure what the function of that is, but. You know, it prevents scratches until you're ready to yeah, go and all that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do with the scratching now or so, kind of, right? What, yes. What kind of portage we got? Oh my goodness, we have so well, many. It has a lot of ports. So yeah, if we want to take a quick detour into Portland over here. Um, Portlandia, Port, yes. starring Asus. <laughs> there we go. It's uh, <laughs> a Fred Armisen joint. <laughs> we have the uh, audio stuff all over here. These are the uh, analog audio jacks um, and an optical SPDIF jack. Uh, we have a Type-C uh, USB over here, as well as a... Uh, regular USB 3.1 port um, above it. Um, over here, a whole heap of USB 3 ports is one with a circle around or a square around it that says BIOS, which I believe is uh, ASUS's BIOS flashback, yep. which lets you um, revert the BIOS or put a fresh BIOS on there if you're overclocking mm -hmm. and you mess things up. You put it on a flash drive and restore it from there. Yeah. You know, we've also got an ordinary, I believe that's a... Um, huh. uh, ten, uh, Where we're going, we won't need their built-in yeah, Ethernet. Yeah, I was going to say the ordinary... Uh, Ethernet and a um, bunch of connectors for the onboard Wi Fi, and also, uh, I guess, a clear CMOS button for when mm -hmm. you overclock and goof things up. <laughs> Inevitably. And, yep, and uh, BIOS, um, I believe that's probably the BIOS reset. I probably shouldn't be pressing that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll find out when we boot. Um, so that's the, uh, the back panel of the board, and the rest of the board we'll get to know as we install cards and yep. uh, all the other stuff on it. So, um, okay, orienting the board. There's a nice gaping cutout to tell you where, where uh, the CPU, to put it. Yeah, so the, C so the CPU... It's just case fan cable. We don't really have to worry about the underside, because no. oftentimes these cases have a big cutout in them, so you can access it um, when you're mounting the uh, CPU cooler. Right. Um, there's no need for that here, because we've already got that stuff on here. So we're going to rotate this this way and put it in the case just like drop so. It in like drop so. it in. Actually, you know what, before the we do that. The case fan wire is really in the way there. Yeah, that, and also I realize we should probably check to make sure that the, um, the mounts are in the correct place. So this wire, there's a case fan back here which has a it's wire that's gonna be trouble later. So I'm going hanging to. hanging right in the way. So the cable's loose. Um, I think we can um, you know, get it out of the way later if we need to or fully remove it. So we're, let's get to turn the case back down and get to mount the motherboard. Get, get that motherboard in there. All right, there we go. Okay, looking good? Yep. Okay, so um, first thing to do here would be to um, check out where the, the holes in the motherboard are and see if they match up with the, uh, the brass things in there. So inside the case here, there are a variety Two of- sets this yeah, way. Yeah, so nine total brass mounts. Um, so I'm just gonna lay the board in there just and, and see if it, yeah, just to see if they match up. And then we're gonna take it out again once it's in. Okay, so well, first things first, this has to come out. All right. Yoink. So this case has a big shroud over here, which covers up a lot of the cabling that you might um, install. It's this big piece of plastic here. Yeah. Great for when you're done. Not so yeah. great when you're in the middle of stuff. Right. So we're going to take that out and get it out of the way. That's in the way of our board. Keep the screw for that over here. Okay. So now we get some room to work. And we go. All right. Okay, so let's take a look. There should be nine holes and nine mm -hmm. brass things showing through. Yeah, you can see these through a little more clearly than some other boards, so that's nice. Right. It looks lined up pretty, pretty well. Are all good. These are good up here too. All right, great. So you know what? I, I don't think we need to take the board out again. No, let's just uh, find the motherboard screws and screw good. down. Yeah. Thankfully, because of this very nicely organized uh, <laughs> bag situation, thank you again, Mean IT, Mean It. Um, we know which ones exactly those are. All right, great. So let's bust them out. I'll get the others. Oh, I assume they're Phillips. All right. Uh, yes. All right. We have one of those. Just test the. Take head. it away. 
Yep, okay. All right. We are going to have a motherboard mounting party. Go for it. Woohoo! All right. One piece. Yeah, sure. All right. So excited. So excited to mount. Oh no! It actually uh, fell right. Fell, fell yeah, right that is down. not a magnetic screwdriver. I thought it was. That was my mistake. That's all right. Now very, this is where I realized I'm going to take them. In the middle of our build here, we uh, we have a magnetic bowl which um, we like to keep screws in when we're doing stuff on the lab table. I forgot to bring it along here, so if we have a break here, I'll go and grab it. So if a silver bowl full of screws suddenly appears in the middle of the frame, <laughs> that's wh what happened. Our so, most beloved tool. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so um, Matt's going to. Uh, Screw in those nine screws there. It'll take a little bit of time, and in the meantime, I'm going to clean up the table here and uh, yeah, see John, what. Yeah, John, you made a, you made a mess. Yeah, I really did. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, this is actually pretty good as PC builds go. I mean, we're being scrupulous about this, but if you ever see our bench after we've done one of these, it usually looks like a relatively clean. Like you're, a, you're welcome. Yeah, a micro center exploded or something. <laughs> so everyone's nightmare. Yeah. So um, so he's going to continue screwing in the um the case piece, the uh, excuse me the uh, case the heat, screws the there. The heat sink is just on the border of not in the way. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's, excellent. It's very, yeah, very close. This is kind of a thick wrench too, so it's it's okay. Yeah, if you need a longer. Uh, we have a, uh, a longer uh, think, shaft there if you need it. We do have a uh, we do have a toolkit here which uh, has almost everything you would need for building a PC. But Making progress. this oftentimes is invaluable if you want to swap that out. This is actually oh no, yeah, I think that, I think good. I got I got into the most busy areas. That, that was so. the worst one. Yeah. Okay, great. Up by the heat sink, got a little got excellent. A little tight. Okay, so yeah, the um, yeah the once the board is in place there, I think we're. Um, going to be in pretty good shape. The next uh, thing we'll have to do, though, is one of the sort of more frustrating and finer bits of building any PC, which is figuring out how to get the wires that belong to the case to work with the motherboard. So the board um, has a lot of small uh, clusters of pins on it called headers, and anybody who's built a PC knows what these are. They're usually two or three, four pins. You have to plug a connector from the front panel of the, of the board to one of these on the, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, one of the excuse me, um, cables on the uh, case to uh, the headers on the board. So um, while Matt's doing that there, I'm actually going to root in the pile over here for a small Please do. piece of hardware. Almost done. I got two screws left. Yep, take your time. All right. Do, do, do. So while he's screwing stuff in there, I'm going to take this out. Now, ASUS is known for these, and I mean, every other motherboard vendor, I believe at this point, has uh, moved to using these as well under their own names. This is what's called a Q connector. Um, that's Zeus's own name for it, and other vendors have their own names. But basically what it is, is it's a block of pins um, that you plug the cables for the uh, case into, and then you take the whole block and you plug it onto a um, set of pins on the board, and it makes it a lot easier than trying to actually just plug stuff directly into the board. Um, there's, uh, you know, limited visibility and clearance, you know, uh, ordinarily inside, you know, a case, especially a case this size. So these are always very, uh, very welcome. So uh, as Matt wraps up over there, yep, last I'm, one. yes, I'm going to actually hit the manual again. Reading? Reading, yes. In, the, in 2017? Yes, there is that. Ah, here it is. Sometimes on no, actual paper, no less. Real live, real live paper. So I'm what I'm going to try and do. Oh, are we done? The board is in. Holy camoly! That was quick. Efficient. All right. All right. There we go. So you can take take case and shake it up upside down and see if it's mounted properly. Oh, uh, we could do that. All right. Well, you know, let's get a few more parts <laughs> in it. Then we'll do that. Uh, well, usually, what if, it, what if it's not? It's well, my, it's sort of my thing. We usually end up having to do that anyway because somebody yeah. drops a screw in there it's and it gets lost in a crevice. Yeah. So I mean, I, no, I, I commend you. Um, that was a uh, that, was, that was, was swift. That was very good. Yeah. I mean, usually I lose a screw somewhere in a crevice there, and yeah, no. you know, you're shaking it up and down. That was probably my best run. That was my best time. <laughs> there we go. Speed running the speed running this motherboard. There yeah. we are. All right, so I'm going to take a quick look in here, and maybe you can hunt around in the meantime around the edges of the board. We're going to look for a, um, a header. Um, let's see where it is. Searching far it's and wide. probably going to say front panel or something of that sort on it. F panel. You see F panel? I do. F panel. All right. Let's see. Excellent. Okay, so F panel. Let's find out where the, the uh, schematic for F panel is. F panel. Gotta love, gotta love me. Front I.O. connector. 2-7. Page 2-7. I dream of being organized enough with my wires to use these effectively. <laughs> we have so many, it's like, oh, surely you're going to tie off all your wire groupings in, in Actually, logical, time, sensi you know, sensible, organized fashion. And I'm like, yeah, we, we make it to wake up from my dream. Yeah. Right. Well, by the time we're done with this build, you probably use those to restrain me. You know, <laughs> just, you know, my hands by my back, you know. But yeah. um, there, you know, there is that. Um, so 2-7, uh, front panel I.O. connector. Here we go. So 
back to this little thing. Um, this has a bunch of connector, uh, excuse me, connector pins on it, and each of them is supposed to uh, plug into a couple of cables that come off the board. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to need to do is flip the board upwards. Excuse me, not the board. Excuse me, the case <laughs> upwards. Yeah, and uh, we have to get to the cables that are behind. So the case. vertical. Yep. Yeah, stand up vertically, and go. then I'm going to come around the front. Moment of truth for my screws. My, my screws. Okay. So give it a little tilt action to make sure we're good. And yeah. Yep. All right. Seems so, like I did the thing. You did the thing. So over here. We have a cluster of cables. Many, many a cable. And um, I believe these are the ones that we're looking for. Okay. These so are all the, the cables you're looking for. These are, <laughs> that's right. Um, USB, this one says. USB, this one, I believe, says as well. One of them is for USB 2, one of them is for USB 3. We're going to plug those in a little later. So I'm going to put those aside for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, this bunch is the one we're looking for. This is another, this is the front panel audio connector. Let me show that off. Um, that one will be plugged in later as well sure. on the board. And then this one here... It's got things like the, the front LED lights, the USB, the drive, the reset light. Yeah, so this, this is what we're looking for for the Q connector that we were looking at. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to match them up and um, give you a running commentary as I do it. So hopefully the camera can capture the, uh, the action here. So first one here says PLED plus, PLED minus. That is for the power LED. Yeah. Now, the thing to remember is, is that some of these are polarity sensitive and some of them aren't, meaning that um, you could switch the plus and the minus and um, they'll be fine, yes. or you switch them and they won't be fine. Yeah, this is maybe the most kind of arcane thing in a build. It's, it's kind of, if you have no previous explanation of what that stuff is, you can kind of be lost there. Yeah. I remember doing my first build and being like, I'm not sure I got this. So I looked around online and figured it out, but. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. usually the best advice. But here, this one's pretty clearly marked. We have a power LED plus, so that's going in the power LED plus pin. So let's get that on there. Also very tiny, just physically very small and finicky. Yeah. <laughs> and then plus power, sorry, we're wiggling things a bit here, but power LED minus. There we go, so those two are in. Now next to that is a ground and power. So that, I, uh, I'm gonna flip this over and see what it says on the other side. Um, hard drive LED, ground and reset. So power is gonna be the power switch. Um, so power switch is here, that's this connector. Um, ground is going to be uh, the minus, and that's the plus, so it looks a little counterintuitive, but we're going to put that in upside down. Let me just double check that. Yep. Trust the labels. Trust the labels. So that should be our power switch. If this, When the system doesn't fire up later, we'll, remind me about that. We'll come back to that. All right, flip it over. Um, hard drive LED plus and minus. This one has a matching plus or minus on the actual uh, connector, so we're going to put that on there. Get that on. Come on, hard drive LED. Don't be difficult. Okay. And the reset switch. So ground, reset, and um, that's a blank pin. So we're going to, um, the positive on reset is going to be like that. So we're going to flip it. And that matches up the polarity. So basically, these would have ordinarily had to go directly into the motherboard. This makes it a lot easier. We just put the whole block in the motherboard and mm -hmm. don't have to uh, sweat the really small stuff. So, Matt, on that side of the case... Yeah, feed that through to me, will you? Yeah, where's the best place to put it through? Here? Uh, probably the bottom, because that's bottom. where the, the front panel is down here. Okay, so we'll feed that through this thing here? Yeah. Okay, great. It's right All next right. door. All right, so we'll plug that in in a minute so the camera can catch it. Yep. Um, let's feed the other cables. This one... Um, what you got for me? So we got a HD audio, so maybe you could tell me which hole the HD audio oh, would be best me, to go through. Let me find it first. All right, and if you need me to check the manual, uh, we can uh, do that. Uh, I see a lot of fans, I see a lot of fans. Probably along the bottom edge is my guess. Yeah. Either I think either way you're probably safe just putting it in the same hole then. All right. I don't, always, I don't see it yet, but we'll we can always it. reroute it later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me know when you've got that. So yep. I'm gonna we're through. Okay. So how about um, USB three? That's the uh, um, the big twenty pin thing. Also on the bottom edge here. Okay. We'll feed that through. Yeah. Okay. And USB two point oh, probably um, the same spot. Probably the right? same spot. Yeah. Okay. Here you have it. Weak. Now, if we wanted to be really confident, we could just zip tie this all together and say we're not going to move these again. We could. And we you know, know what? we know we have this right. We know. So you know what? Let's let's you know live dangerously. Wow. Our first show of confidence. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> all right. There we go. A little bit of cable tie action there. Okay. So I'm coming back around. All right. Let's flip it down. Let's bum, see what we're doing. All right. So we got a whole bunch of cables here. And we'll feed them probably back through the other side, mm -hmm. you know, so it, they don't look so uh, ugly in here. But it's good to have the, uh, the, um, the cable length here to do what we got to sure, do. Yeah. All right, so USB 3, that's an easy one because um, 
Well, let's see, there's two of them. There's one here, and there's one here. Yeah. Which one, for cable routing purposes, I would suspect this one yeah, might be a little closest, better. Yeah. yeah, it's closer, and we can hide more of the cable. So yeah. look for the uh, cable here. It's got a notch on the top of it. Um, notch up on the yeah, top. Yeah, notch on the top of the socket, and we're going to plug it in. If you wouldn't mind holding those cables sure. over there so the camera can make out what we're doing. I'm going to feed this cable back through here and snap it in. And snap it in. <laughs> wow, that's snug. Um, snugger than it usually is. Okay, that looks like it's like there. The strand that we took off before. Well, now you that. see where where. Yeah, I have we'll a feeling hide. that may not um, that not may not make on, it. Yeah, let's, we'll uh, just for curiosity's sake. In theory, though, that is where it goes. Yeah, that's not happening. I think it's going to uh, interfere. With, yeah, it interferes with the board. So this this will not be uh, not be Bye part shot. of our build. It was a nice there dream. we go. It was a good idea. All right. This is the kind of things you discover as you build a system mm -hmm. that sometimes. Uh, in the things that look good in theory don't always fit with the actual hardware you have. All right, so we have a USB connector here. This is a USB 2 connector, old school USB 2. So we have to find a USB 2 header. Um, here we go. Nope. Yeah, USB, here we are. That, this is the 20 pin USB. This one next to it is USB um, ordinary. So the way to um, orient this is on the bottom of the, the uh, connector there's a, a blocked pin mm -hmm. and on the grid on the board there's a missing pin and that matches up with that. So we're going to plug that in. I apologize if the studio audience isn't able to see what I'm doing but it's a little cramped in here. They're hissing and booing at you John. Ooh, all right. furious. There we go. You know what I, I'm, the aesthete in me is saying maybe we should feed that through here to uh, bring it a little very, closer but very possibly. we'll switch it later if we have to um, or if we can. <laughs> all right, so this here is the uh, the block that we shoved all the pins onto, the uh, ASUS Q connector, and we're going to plug that into the um, F panel block over mm -hmm. here. So that's in the corner, um, and again, like the USB, there's a pin that's uh, blocked in the corner. And let's see how that's going to go, like so. That was Doink. that was too easy. That was too almost too easy. Yeah, I'm a little worried about that, but that's okay. It's never right. easy. It's never this easy. It's supposed to be a pin. It's a trap. There we go. All right. What was this one? HD audio. All right. So this is the, uh, we never the audio. Found that, we never found that guy. Um, I believe it's AAFP. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 certain that's the case. That's pretty certain. So let's plug it in there, and I'll check the manual before we boot up, because um, a long time ago I had an experience where I put one of these on the wrong thing, and it ended in a puff of smoke. That's not great. One of my former colleagues will never let me live it down. <laughs> Let's see. So there we go. So anyway, these cables are a little bit uh, out in the open and ugly, but we'll probably route them again later. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we may even do it off camera to uh, not bore everybody with the details, to streamline things a bit. Yeah. So anyway, that's one of the, um, the gnarlier parts of any build, and we got through it OK. Yeah. So um, why don't we move on to cleaning up the table a bit, and then we can put on the CPU Everything's cooler. Everything's so neat. What do you mean? Oh, yes. But um, the CPU cooler is going to create a huge explosion of stuff on the, on the, yeah, on the little, table here. So we'll do that. that. Yeah, so I'll I'm going to shove some things you. over while you get it yeah. out. Yep. OK. Take this away. All right. Um, we'll leave those there. All right. But We're need let's get into that. this case. What is this again? And tell me and the, yeah. the audience here a little bit about this one. So yeah, Thermaltake, um, maker of uh, lots of cooling products, lots of um, bling. All in one here, you have cooling as product you can, and bling. Yeah, as you can see. Right, the, the <laughs> flow ring. This is a uh, pretty serious uh, long water cooler that we're uh, going to put in the top of the case across here and then mount on the, uh, the Threadripper chip. The flow ring. The flow ring. So will we need the instructions? I don't know. Yeah. We'll put them there. We'll, to we'll be see. determined. Right. So let's haul all the stuff out. We got some. Don't leave. Uh, don't leave home without your your paste. Yeah, we actually have a supplementary tube over there too. Um, so let's pull this out. Um, so these are the fans. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a lot of wiring um, that we're going to need. Um, and let's this pull out the, the radiator. Radiator. The radiator and the pump. And the pump. All right. And then of course more cables. The bracket mm -hmm. for mounting. Right. And uh, I'm not sure yeah, what so this that's, is. Um, this is a fan controller. Oh, yeah, I see. So basically all the fans that are going to go onto this radiator are going to plug into this, and then this is going to plug into a uh, port on the motherboard. So we're going to have to work that all out as we unpackage all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So this is, uh, let's see, what are you? Oh, it's nicely, oh, no, it's not. Yeah. I, was, I, thought it was, I thought it was labeled like our motherboard parts, but yeah, sadly G18 it's... Yeah, G18EOE8900MOOO. Ah, so, of course. Of course. If you don't know what that is, John, you're kind of behind the curve, I hate to say yeah, it. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to check the manual on that, but um, let's start unboxing some of these things we're going to need here. Yeah. So, fan number one, fan number two. And you guessed it. Fan number, fan number three. three. All right. We're going to get the plastic off the radiator here. Let's see. 
Oh, careful, yeah. you pop the... Uh... Yeah, it's all right, we'll take that off. There's a bit of uh, thermal paste pre-applied here. We're probably gonna add some more, but yeah. uh, if we can just get that piece out of there, and we'll put that over there so we don't get thermal paste in our clothes, which is never, good. never a good thing. Let me tell you, it doesn't um, go off of anything. And then this bag has a lot. Of screws and mounts. a wide variety of screws, mounts, nuts, bolts, fasteners. Okay. And so several different bracket types because they want, they don't know what uh, motherboard you're using. Right, so the thing is, is on this um, board, we already have a bracket that came with the Threadripper chip, mm -hmm. and it's uh, keyed, I believe, to um, the bottom of this uh, cooler here. So we're gonna test fit it in a moment. But first things first, um, we have a lot of fans and cables to install here. Yes. So um, let's think this through. Um, when we put this in the chassis, we're probably going to have to go like this. Um, that's my... We uh, want it top-mounted, Top-mounted, yes. Because there are a couple couple uh, options that people do with their radiators. Sometimes yeah. they front-mount them. Sometimes yeah. they do intake rather than out. Right. So the thing with this is, is that this case could do it either way. We could do front-mount, we could do top-mount, but mm -hmm. we already have three nice lit fans in the front, and uh, taking them all out would be a pity. That's just a... That's and just a, more yeah. lit fans, you know, is a good thing, so... More lights? Yeah, more better. lights. So we're going to do it this way and um, have the uh, cooler mount to the uh, CPU with the hoses curved this way. So that means we'll have to put our fans on the bottom going with the screws going through here. Yes. Okay. So um, quick uh, orient orientation on fans. Generally the side with the bracket on it here is your exhaust. So that means the air is coming in this side going out that side. So if you're mounting it on this uh, radiator here, you want the air to be coming from inside the case through the radiator and out the top. And on the top here we have a uh, uh, magnetic, screen. A magnetic yeah. screen, yeah, for uh, dust seal. filter. And what yeah, it's a dust filter if you're doing it on intake, but I guess we could leave it on for now or take it off depending on yeah. the kind of noise that we get from it. But the idea here is, is that we need to, there's going to be some screws somewhere over here. Which, several bags, several bags, take your pick. So the longest ones you see are going to go through yeah. this fan and into the, into the uh, uh, radiator, so we need to mount those. Um, so let's haul those out. Um, so many screws. So many screws. I'm going to take a look at the instructions here, just to make sure we're using instructions. the Instructions? Right now hold on. Yeah, so let that go. Um, take these and get them out of the way. So much. There's more stuff in just the uh, the cooler case than I think the rest of the components combined, combined so pretty far. Much. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, they're basically accommodating every possible kind of CPU uh, yeah. that you might mount this on, and this doesn't even account for Threadripper. So you've got uh, Intel and AMD legacy going stuff with, here. Uh, going with these long screws. All right. So yeah. So my thought is is if we're going to mount these, we want mm -hmm. the um, looking at the cable routing in this case here. We probably want the cabling to be facing the back of the case. Um, if there'll be enough clearance for it. So I'm thinking when we mount them, let's have the portion that's connected to the, the fan towards the bottom here of the, uh, of the radiator. So we're gonna turn the radiator over and we'll want them to be along here. Yeah. So, so that's you drop the thinking. these down, see how right. long these gaps are and it has to screw in, so that's why these are so long. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just play, maybe I'll place them all. Just place them. Yeah. And uh, grab the screwdriver. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, this is this head's way too small. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. There's actually a bigger screwdriver here. It's uh, down here. Get it for uh, you. Oh, you had it on me. Um, yep, yeah. There you go. Always cleaning the place up. So, so yeah. While you're screwing in, yeah, those, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get going here. Right. So you'll be working on that. In the meantime, I'm going to take a look at some of the uh, other parts that we have here and see if we're gonna need to use them or not. So, uh, G18E, 303, etc. Let's see what you are. <laughs> um, we'll take it out of the case here. So it looks like this is a power connector um, for the fan hub that we were looking at. I'll double check that in the manual to make sure. And this, hmm, what are you? Uh, it's a header with two micro USB ports on it. And um, I'm gonna have to check and see where that goes. I suspect that's a communications cable of some mm. kind that's gonna communicate um, uh, lighting information from the hub somehow to the motherboard. The so, most important thing in any case. Yeah, having RGB lights, I mean, all the other stuff doesn't really Why matter Why build a computer much. with that one, I right. say? Right, so I'm gonna just take a moment here and take a look at the uh, manual here, since I've never used this particular cooler before. 
You don't just, have an encyclopedic knowledge of every cooler manual? Not, not ones that did not exist as of a month or a couple weeks ago, unfortunately. <laughs> disk, disk. Yeah. Oh, so here we go. Controller installation. That's what we're going to need. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. Um, so there are 16 possible dip switch combinations on this here. That's a lot. That is a lot. So well, I'm going to just reach under here, if you don't mind. You show those off. Yeah. So <laughs> on this fan controller, we've got um, dip switches, which are... Uh, a, you know, f uh, four possible, excuse me, uh, four switches with two possible positions each. I'm not entirely sure what the uh, positions mean. So set the dip switch on the back side of the controller to assign the number of the controller. Um, let's see. Connect the controller cable to the main board, connect the power cable to the four pin Molex connector. I suspect this has to do with um, assigning uh, which channel belongs to which fan, either in the BIOS or in the lighting software. So, what we're going to do, I think, is leave it on defaults for now. And mm -hmm. once we get Windows installed and all the uh, relevant software sure. installed, we can mess around with it later. Yeah, everyone's going to kind of customize that to their own desire. Some people right. might not touch it, et cetera. But yeah, if you're using a different case, you might, uh, yeah. you know, be. Uh, Installing it. Well, actually, this only has three connectors on it, so mm. this is going to be dedicated strictly to this. You're not going to get any other fans on this. Sure. So while you're screwing screwing that, yeah, just uh, like in, shoot, I'm, I'm moving, just shoot yeah, volume of these screws. Yeah, there's a lot of screws there. I'm going to mess around with the fan controller. Um, so on the fan controller, it looks like we have, um, you know, the front face here, and on the bottom edge, there's three connectors here, presumably for the connectors on the fans, and if our camera person can get in close on that, I'm going to move it down here. These are going to plug into this, so it's going to require a healthy bit of cable routing um, once we get to that point. So that's going to go in there. We have three fans plugged in there. Then, on this side, it looks like there's a communications port of some kind, a micro USB. I'll have to look up and see where the other end of this goes, but that's clearly for the cable that came in the box here uh, that has the micro USB uh, connector on it. The other side here, maybe for additional fans, or it may be for, um, now that I look at it, it's got to be for additional fans, I believe. And then this side here is likely the power. So this would go in there, like so. The other end would go into a Molex power connector from the power supply, which we'll be hooking up later. So that's the fan controller stuff. We'll be installing that in a minute, but at least I feel like we have a handle on it. So um, there's that. And of the other materials that came in the box with this cooler. Oh. Whoops. Okay. I don't believe we're going to be using any of these, so um, I'm just going to leave that over there. Two screws left. I'm almost there. Nope. Yeah, no, no pressure. No pressure. So in the meantime, I'm going to unfasten all this stuff here, start straightening the cable out. And actually, the next step would be to figure out what screws we're going to use to actually mount that thing in the case. Because it looks like it's going to take yeah, we have more no than shortage, a few. We have no yeah. shortage of screws here. Yeah. So, the final, the final one. The final one. All right, looking good. Ta-da. Okay, so 12 screws later, we have all the fans mounted on the radiator. Nice work there. And now we just notice we actually have multiple connectors on here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess one of these is going into the controller. The other one is going to go into the motherboard. Mm -hmm. This has got to be for the, um, the pump power. So we'll figure it out once we get everything screwed in here. So why sure. don't we figure out which of these screws we're going to use to mount this to the case. Um, my guess is it's not that. You say AMD, AMD on them. They do say AMD. But these, I think, are for mounting the actual... Um, uh, Might be these guys. No. No. Yeah, no, I'm not. afraid not. I think these are for also for mounting to the, uh, the board. It's probably this little bunch these here. These guys, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has the... Mm. All right, so let's turn this Washers. this way. Let's see, what's going to be the best way to do this? I think, so, do we want to have it sideways or, yeah, I guess it has to be sideways. Yeah. We'll have to come around the front and screw yeah. it in. Okay, so this is the fun part. Uh, this is the part where you need like four hands. Um, now hopefully this will actually Luckily work. Luckily we have that many. Yeah, so let's see if this is going to work. And hopefully I was correct in putting those cables where I did, but if not, um, we're going to be, yep, but it looks like it'll be okay. All right. Whew. All right, I think that'll go in, and wow, there's a lot of clearance there, a lot more than I expected. So I'm going to come around that side. Um, if you want to, uh, let's see, I start unbagging the screws there. Yoink. I'm going to take the magnetic tray off of here, or the magnetic uh, shield off of here, and then see how this lines up. Um, well, it pretty much lines up. Pretty much, pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good over here. Let's see if I can scooch this over a little bit, maybe. Nope, that's pretty much it. So it looks like we're going to have, let's see. Yep, I think uh, I think we're just going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
So you have eight screws. Eight Do we screws. have eight, eight It the... looks like we have eight screws. All right, well, I better get down to it, right? Yeah. Okay. Please. All Your right. turn. <laughs> All right, so if you could press a little bit against this. Yeah. This is where the four hands come into play, right? All right. Let's see. And if you have no one to help you build your computer, well, sorry. No, there's there's ways to do it about uh, which way you want to orient your case to kind of help gravity help yeah. you out. All right. Let's see. I think uh, even if you want to put it upside down. Let's see. I feel like this is not lining up. It's Why possible. Not? Let's see. Let's lift it. It, a bit. it has a, it can it has a lot of uh, ah. range of motion here. So yeah, you can... I think I uh, I, me I messed up. All right. So let's take that out again. Yeah, this is one of the trickiest things uh, I remember when I put my CPU in my last build. There's all these holes. <laughs> Just because of the grate, and then there's more holes, and there's ones you don't need, and only yep. one of them lines up. So right. it, it's a bit Oops. of a puzzle. All right. Okay, so let's realign. Try that. again. Take your best bet. All right. Hmm, that's not lining up. Oh, I see. We're in the wrong line of holes here. We need to go down lower. Okay. That's it. Right there. Okay. Cool. Once we get a couple in the opposite corners, it'll all fall into place. Yeah, it makes it obvious. Whoops. Reverse the screwdriver. So while you're doing this, um, why would someone want one of these giant coolers in here? Does everyone need, does every CPU need one of these liquid coolers? Certainly um, not. Um, what's this kind of usage case for something like this? Well, for something like this, over, um, we haven't had any chance to test um, uh, Threadripper, you know, in ordinary usage, but mm -hmm. um, most of the solutions that are actually being offered are liquid cooled, and Threadripper is going to be a very powerful, hot running It's going to run hot, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 16 cores, 32 threads when you start, you know, doing... Uh, video editing or video renders that you know are going to hit all those cores at the same time. You're going to be uh, generating a serious amount of heat. So I think even a basic um, liquid cooler is going to be what you want for mm -hmm. Threadripper. Um, this one is quite over the top, as you can see. It's of you know some of them have one fan, you know some have two fans, three fans is the I would say a rational maximum. Although <laughs> I think there is you know one size bigger. Um, although when you're up at three fans, you're already pretty much in the uh, yeah, extremist fringe there. We physically couldn't needs. fit another one here. Yeah, not in this case. Yeah, so the um, you know the uh, bracket that AMD is providing with the Threadripper chips um, is really keyed for a liquid cooler. I mm -hmm. don't even I, you, if you want to do an air cooler on this, you would have to buy a air cooler, I believe, specifically designed for Threadripper, which right. has its own mounting hardware. So at that point, yeah, get a liquid cooler. Right. Yeah, or you could do air, but you'll have to buy it from someone like Noctua or a couple yeah. of other folks that uh, will be making them. It looks like it's the last one there. May need to put a little bit of pressure on this corner down yeah, here. Yeah, I'm just pushing to, for you. Oh, yeah, it is? Okay. Yeah. yeah, as long as it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going. Or not. Or okay. not at all. Let's see. We may have an issue with some wiring behind there. We hope we don't have to take this out again, but... Um, no, the wires aren't... They're all, they're all clear? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not sure why that one's... A little bit outward. Oh, yeah. the, rest of the, the rest of these are in. Right? The rest they're are in. I mean, in, mo in most uh, situations like this, I'd say, you know what? We got seven out of eight in. We're all right. And that's what I'm going to do. That's so pretty then fine. We will cover up our sins there with that plate. No one will ever know what happened. There we go. All right. Perfect. All right. So there we go. So that's in. Water cooler in. Whew. Um, all right, so the next thing is going to be... One of the more painful yeah. portions. <laughs> Although I feel like we also say that for every step. So maybe yeah. every step Well, we haven't got to the power supply yet. Painful. So, that, that's yeah. always... So, that's yeah, Hold out. There's more pain uh, coming right up. Um, let's have the, uh, the screwdriver here. So one thing we didn't do early on in the, uh, the build was um, to uh, screw down the uh, bracket over the CPU yes. tightly. Uh, so I'm just going to do that now. Just get a moment to yeah. tighten those up. Yeah. They're pretty tight, though, by the hand screws. I, I, you yeah, know. you did a good job of getting most of the way, I think. Yeah. So just getting them to finger tightness, not overdoing it. Yep. Uh, um, so when you get to the point where yeah, don't you over, get resistance. Don't over-tighten pretty much any component. Even even tightening the um, fan yeah. into the radiator, you can kind of warp them a little bit if you put... Because, you know, the plastic on these isn't... Right. For, like, you well, don't want to over-screw. The, the screw will win every time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, we're there. So this is down. Um, now the cables on the uh, pump here, we're going to have to take them open, or open them up, and uh, make sure we can route them before we actually mount the pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are loose. I suppose we didn't use the washers for the uh, 
Yeah, we didn't. The Raiders screws. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. when it catches fire later, I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put it We know why. Yeah, no, nah, it'll be fine. It'll Those be are fine. Um, really probably not necessary. It would have made it a little no, more No, it would have been harder to screw them in even because yeah, these are really short screws to begin with. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not quite sure that Yeah, if I flown. checked the menu, I believe it may have been meant to go between the radiator and the case on the inside. Interesting. Which made this even more interesting. Right, too, yeah. So, so um, oh, well. Eh, not too so, broken up about it. Nope. All right, so we're going to pop this off. Um, for the purposes of this build, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do this if this was your own uh, Threadripper build. Don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. Um, I'm going to run with the uh, um, thermal solution that's actually on the on the um, cooling plate here. We're going to take this apart again later. We're going to be testing a Threadripper over the next week or so. We'll be swapping chips in and out. So we really don't want to um, get too committed to what's on here because we're going to be taking it off again really yeah. soon. So I'm going to go in here. Um, hopefully this will be visible to the studio audience. and. Let's see. Um, Let's get a camera up yeah, nice so we'll and tight in there. Camera in. And then we're the gonna moment put this, of truth. Here we go. So we're going to put this down here. And it's not fitting. Um, and the reason why is because we screwed this down first. And we're going to have to unscrew it. Ah. Yeah, so we're going yeah. to... Your tightening was... was too, we were too efficient too about efficient. this. So you know what? Let's move this off to the side. Actually, let me get the uh, plastic cap so we don't gunk everything up. Yes, with, good thought. With gobbledygook there. All right. All right. A little order of operations yeah. mishap, but it happens, and you shouldn't panic. Yeah, this being can... our first Threadripper build, um, yeah. I was afraid something like this would happen, but nothing it we won't can't happen again. fix. Yeah. All right, so let's remove the the frame again. Just kidding. There we go. Remember that bracket we tightened? It was just a just a practical joke. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm hoping we can lock this on here, and um, fingers are crossed. Yeah, and, and it looks like we're gonna have to put it on just the right orientation, or else this will be twisted. Sure. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. So I think we got it. So let's see. This is gonna go like this. Yoink. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we're gonna put this in here. Some grooves. So right. Kinda. All right. I'm in. Wow. I'm in. There we go. And just trying to get it uh, locked in. Yep, yeah, I think we got it. All right. So again, there was an order. There's an order written on them. Yeah. Well, let's see. I just this started is, with. This is one. That's one there. Okay. Yep. We'll start. I really. Oh, I got it. It's good. It's good. All right. One. Two is down in that corner. Yep. Two oh, is. Pop back up. You pop back up. All right. All right. Try one again. Hmm. You need to loosen, uh, loosen the grip on two, yeah. There we go. All right. All right, so one started. Yeah, so give it a couple of turns to make sure it yeah. takes. One's in. All right, so that's enough. Yeah, don't put that one go any further because I think two won't go in now. It might be too tight. Uh, we need to back off one. Yep, oh, it's actually good. Yeah. All right. And then three. All right. Three actually looks like it's... There it goes. There okay. Go. Yeah, it's not lining up quite... How about, how's four looking? Four's actually pretty off track, interestingly. Okay. I have to kind of pull it up and pop it back down in the hole. There we go. Okay, there we go. Nice yeah, work. it has a little more give than you'd expect from a CPU. Yeah. <laughs> a cooler mount, really. But let's just make sure the. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's locked in. That's the way it's supposed yeah, to be. They're, they're all in. We got it. Yeah. All right, so yeah, go ahead and finger tighten them at, as you like. Will do. All right. Yeah, that was. Um, that was interesting. Yeah, that's a lesson learned there. Mm hmm. Don't put the mount on before you attach the cooler. All right. Cool. That's mostly uh, mostly tightened. Okay. Very good. All right. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver a little and bit. And now, yeah. I'm not going to uh, overdo it. Perfect. Okay. Just a finger tightness. Just like the instructions say. <laughs> I'm sure it was all in there. It was in that, that exact order. But you didn't want to watch us stand here for 10 minutes and read a manual, did no. you? No. You'd rather see us fumble our way through and, yeah. you know, where's the, where's the, the, ed the edgy possibility that we might actually break something. Um, so what do we have here? We have two wires coming off the uh, CPU cooler. Um, one of these is going to go to the motherboard. Mm -hmm. One of them is going to go to the fan controller that we've been um, talking about. So let's find the motherboard connector first. Um, the motherboard connector is going to be a three-pin thing that probably says uh, water pump. And we can look around in here. Let's search. So you, um, 
Hmm. <laughs> All right. This is the part of the sh uh, the show where you should probably put up the intermission card. And da, 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 da. Yeah, right. CPU fan. CPU optional. Q Jeopardy theme. Yeah. So, okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to plug this into CPU fan for the moment. Sure. And um, Yeah, the font on the motherboards is about this big. Right. We're going to plug it into CPU fan, but there may be a dedicated thing for water cooler pumps. We'll keep so, an eye out for it. Yeah, and I'll also... Um, oh, I see right the word pump down there. Pump, pump, pump. Water pump. W pump. W pump, really? It's all the way down there? Yep. Oh, man. Well, that's like... I think uh, where we should put it. Uh, probably. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So there's three. There's a four-pin connector with this only has three pins, but we're gonna just plug it in on there. There's a, a keying, so you can only put it in on a certain set of pins. So that's that. This is gonna go around the back along with all these other wires for the uh, uh, fans that are gonna go to the fan controller. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be the fun part that nobody's gonna to wanna to see, um, is trying to get all these wires through the other side of the case and into this fan controller, and then... Some Houdini-esque. Yeah, so um, let's bring the case up. Um, all right, this is probably not gonna be pretty, but let's see what we can do. Um, Look at that. Isn't it lovely? It's a mess. <laughs> it's gonna get better. We promise. <laughs> um, let's unfold this. So I'm gonna pass these through to you, Matt. Ready, I'm all ready. Right, got ah. it. All right, cool, and I'm, then I'm gonna you know what? I could pull it all the way through, and then we'll we'll deal with the the excess cable on the other side. Yep. Great. Cool. Okay, that's one. Cable uh, for days. All right, many many cables. Here comes another one. Just un undoing this one. What one's that? This is the first one you threw it through. Oh yes, yeah. The. Uh, all right. Where's this next one? It's going to be another fan. It's just giving me a little hard time on the, oh, uh, the twist tie. Yeah, the twist yeah. tie together, and you have this much room to work. So Yeah. So just give me a moment there. and Really, really a dexterity uh, exercise. dexterity challenge when you build these. All right, here we go. It's coming. It's coming in hot. <laughs> All right, now this one here is going to be the real challenge because it's wedged way up in the corner. Let's see. We like a challenge. There we go. This is where it's my hands being... Half the sides would help. Let's see. It's a coven. All right. Please entertain our studio audience while... Uh, Just a, with a quick while, jig. All right. All right. This one is... Uh, oh, it actually came out. All right. Good. I was afraid it was going to be wedged in there and we were going to have an issue, uh, situation. Nope. Feed me. Uh, all right. Feed you. I'm going to send this one through the far side. So <laughs> I'm be hungry for plugs. <laughs> All right. So, is that, all right. Is that you know? Yeah, that's good. I mean, as long as most of it's out of the. Yeah, you can go a little further with that. Yeah. Doink. All right. Boom. Looking good. Looking John, out. you don't want to see back here. It's not pretty. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. All right. So maybe. I don't uh, want to alarm you, but. I'm going to go get a beer and you just. Yeah, I'll just finish this up. I'll, right. I'll okay. tighten work, right? neaten these up. I got okay. all these cable ties. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, it's rather hideous back there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to get better, actually, once you put the power supply in there. Imagine that. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of stuff here. Um, sure do. We've also got a, got a fan hub. Yeah. Um, so let's start plugging stuff into it. We will deal with the cable routing aspect of it later. That's what, you know, John, that's what they always say, and then they and then, don't, and then yeah. it's just a mess forever. Yeah, three, <laughs> three, yeah, three hours later, you're just like, you know what, yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> These don't need to be neat. Yeah, I'm going to put this up against the wall, and no one's going to see, see it. it. Yeah. But you'll know. Every night, every night before you go to sleep, it will haunt you. And you just, just think just, about it yeah. inside my case. It's just, not, it's just not pretty in there. All right, so we're just plugging these in. These are the uh, actual fans to the um, cooler. To the controller here. Did you? Ta da! Isn't that lovely? It's so streamlined, I think. It's I'd really call great. It. Um, and don't worry, we have more cables to put into it. Sweet. Um, I'm hoping that this one uh, goes in here. No, it does not. It the probably. You know what? Let's just take a quick look at this. Hmm. This is the one from the. Uh, power supply, I believe. So this is mm -hmm. why you have all the dip switches on there, is to dictate which ones are going where. So we've got um, four things coming in and out of here. There's also a um, power connector we're going to need to connect, yes. and um, also the communications cable. So that's probably communications, but or is that two cables? I'm not even this quite sure what that is. Hmm. It's two and one. Oh, heaven's about to see. What is that? <laughs> um, all right, well, you know what? Let's take one of them and put it in here, because it fits. 
And that's all we're really looking for. <laughs> um, that will go, I believe, into a motherboard USB port, but I'm going to check that first because that's, sure. that's a recipe for disaster, if not. And this one, I believe, is this if you... This one charges your phone. Th you could plug your phone into this, yeah. <laughs> I suspect as if you have another one of these, you could chain them together, yeah. or if you have another thermal take um, doodad that is also going to be communicating with the motherboard, use that. So we'll Instead, ignore, we just we'll, have this excess of wires. Yeah, we'll ignore that. And then this cable was the power cable, so yes. we're going to stick that... Uh, the somewhat this, important power cable. Right, you won't get any lights or or action without that. All right, so great. And that's gonna to need to go into uh, power supply. So, wow, okay, we are. <laughs> so you look at this nest, it's yeah, so, beautiful. So we will clean that up at some point. And I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way. So that's our CPU cooler installation. Um, the next step in this is going to be A, trying to hide this, <laughs> and uh, B, uh, putting the power supply in so we can have something uh, to power yeah. all this stuff and eh. plug this into. Of moderate import. Yeah, so let's get that going. Get this junk out the way. All right, and we're gonna True. stick. We're gonna persist with thermal take. Yes, thermal take is back with thermal a take is very, very high powered uh, power supply. Twelve hundred watts. There we go. Tough Power Grand is a twelve hundred watt power supply. We are not going to utilize the full wattage of this thing. Maybe if we put another video card in, a second video card, we need that. But I, for uh, now, it's uh, yeah. I think you just flip it up from here. Oh, it's already yeah. So okay. it. All right. So I'm gonna come around the front there because this is gonna be uh, happening on this side of the case. Dun dun. All right. What do we have? Oh man. Got some cheesecloths, got some styrofoam. Excellent. Oh, and there's a power supply in here too. Yep. And I just, I can't stress enough, an enormous bag full of, of cables. cables. This yes. is out of control. So yeah, so we're gonna use some of those um, and not others. Not so others. let's put that over here. But the uh, PSU itself is looking lovely. Looking mighty sweet. This let's is see. pretty cool. Oh, power wow. supplies are normally very boring. This is actually. Right, this has got some, some gold action going on on top. That's a flashy and, looking guy. Um, the kind of power supply this is is also what's known as the modular power supply. I'm going to turn it this way to check it out. Um, some power supplies have all the um, wiring hardwired into the uh, power supply itself. This one, you only plug in the stuff that you're actually going to use, and that's good when you have a case that's pretty tight like this yep. one because um, we're going to have a lot of cables going in and out. We and don't have room uh, for any extras. I oh, got you a gift go. also, the most important thing in that case. Do not eat. Don't eat, don't eat it. Just keep it. Mm. Silica gel for right. you. Well, you know, this goes on much longer. Give it to right? your kids. <laughs> you know, Give so. it to your kids. Yeah. There we go. So, um... All right, so we have the, let me turn this right side up so we can uh, see what we actually need here. So on this board, every motherboard has a main power connector, which we will dig out of the, uh, the bag over here. Um, everyone has a CPU power connector. This particular board has two CPU power connectors if you're overclocking because um, uh, extra power draw requires an extra um, mm -hmm. set of leads from there. Um, PCI Express is gonna be for the uh, video card. Um, and then peripherals and SATA are going to be the Molex and SATA connectors for our drives that are going to go in this system. So I'm going to put this down for a moment and we're going to start digging into the cable bag. Cable bag, what do we got? All right, we have many cables. And what I think would be best is let's figure out which ones we need. I have a power cable, front. but we're not going to need this one for a while. For a while, yeah. We, we're getting, a, we're getting, getting there. Getting overexcited for that power yeah. cable. Yeah, so this is going to be a, a PCI Express cable. Um, this is going to be for the um, video card. So let's put that one aside. We're going to need one of those. Sure. Um, no, whoops, I dropped a bunch of cables. Let's we need some of them, John. We'll throw them all out. Yeah, well, we'll get to that point. Molex connectors. Um, these are old school connectors for hooking up um, drives and case lighting. I did notice that there was a Molex connector needed for the um, fan controller, so we're going to need this. So let's put that in the need it pile. Need it. All right, what are you? Got to have it. SATA cables, so these are going to be for hooking up the hard drives that we're going to put in later. Um, we haven't discussed those yet, you might have seen them earlier on. We have two of them. They are in the keeper pile. Uh, PCI Express, we're only going to be doing um, one video card, so I believe we only need one of these, but you might want to just check to make sure um, that one, it's the same as that one, because sure. there might be two power, we might need two power connectors for the, uh, the video card we're using. Mm. I, think, I think that's good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, so keep one, ditch the other for now. Okay, this big one is the main power connector. Um, this is going to go into the largest connector here and the largest connector on the motherboard. We definitely need that or we're going nowhere. Also helpfully labeled main yep. connector. There we go. Molex, we don't need another Molex. That goes into the reject pile. Um, these are the CPU connectors. Mm. These are a secondary power connector that go to the CPU. We may need both of them, so we're going to keep this bundle. And what else have we got? Another uh, SATA, don't need that. Yep. Toss. Uh, another video card, PCI Express. Don't need that. And one more. This is 
Sata again. I think we have our fill of Sata. Probably Sata filled. We are Sata full. All right. Sata, so, Sata's fine. Sa oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. There it is. And, that's, and that one's free. That one's on the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know how to follow that up. Um, you can't. You just move, you just move just on. Just move on. Yeah. Um, so and I screws to actually uh, put that in the case. Right. So here's the thing. Um, go on. We're not going to be able to um, route all these cables um, to this once this is installed. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do is plug in what we're going to need first and then install this. That makes sense. And that's going to be a lot of cables. It's a lot. Of, oh, it's a, just sheer volume-wise. It's a lot of cables. of cables. So you know what? Let's start, on, let's start untying these. Okay, okay. Because that's going to take some time. Some and time. in the meantime, we will engage in witty banter. As, okay. as always. Right. So here goes um, the SATA connector. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and plug that right into the power supply. So I don't know if we want to get in close on that. But that's going into one of the uh, SATA connectors here. Plug that in. One of the most satisfying, simple steps is just plugging everything into the power there supply. There is that. It, it's, all, it's all pretty clearly labeled. This, yeah, this is the part that's hard to screw up. Yeah. Um, I like this part. Me too. Um, Mains connector is going here, next door. So let's get that, whoops. Oh, that's not the same connector. All right, what's up with you? Um, let's see. Hmm. Yoink. Let's see. Main connector. That should be good. Yep. Actually, not entirely sure what the other half of this is about. Sometimes they just give you extra. Yeah, I'm wondering <laughs> if that's supposed to go to, oh, that's, oh, I see, that's uh, six, so it's two by five, which would go here. So I see, we only need one CPU connector here, perhaps. Let's see. At this end, what do we have? That's just, nope, that's going to be what it needs. It's just, yeah. That's just, what it, that's just what it needs. How do you feel about a PCIe I connector? feel like I have enough cables in here already, but. <laughs> you have no choice. Yeah, I don't think we do. Um, so let's put that one toward the end here. Is there any rhyme or reason for people who don't know why you'd plug one in here or press a plus No, here? I mean, I'm just starting from the left in this case because there's four of these. Um, but in the other case, there's really not. A, actually, by that logic, this should probably be. Follow your own rules, John. Yeah, you're right, man. Put that Practice over there. what you preach. Mm -hmm. All, All right, right, what else we got here? Um, some more, some more, some more. How do you feel about some SATA? I feel good. Let's see. All right. That's a lot of SATA. Let's just start. That's a lot of SATA. That's a lot of SATA. <laughs> four um, so this one's actually not SATA. SATA. This is Molex. Oh. Um, so this one we're just going to put in um, next to the other SATA. Okay. So what else we got here? Did I take something extra out that we don't need? So we got Molex. We've got SATA. We're going to try and get the power supply in here now. Now, this is a little bit of an unusual power supply in that the corners are curved, and Thermaltake provided us with these little curved pieces here that I guess have to be stuck on the corners to um, fill in the space. So I'm not quite sure why they did that. But bit odd. It seems, yeah. seems avoidable, but yeah, here we I are. Mean, cover, it's nice and curvy, but then you're covering up the curves, so right. I don't quite get the logic there. But anyway, we're going to um, peel from the back of these uh, rubber things um, and then stick them over here and then test fit the holes to make sure that they're actually lined up. Seems like it's a little bit off. Let's take that off. Okay. Just test fitting. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Got another Second one, one for you. Thank you very much. Pre-peeled. Pre-peeled. Only there. the best service here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go like so. Got the wires out of your way. All right. Okay, I'm trying not to knock the Right, the if you push too off. hard, the rubber's gonna, it's only adhesive on, so. Right, okay, so that's gonna be lined up there. Yep, I think we got it. Definitely, okay. you need, I think you might need to push it forward a little more so it's flush uh, on the end Yeah, there. well, the, the screws will pull it in. All right. Um, let's see, where's our screwdriver? Uh, use your hands. All right, yeah, well, of course. I have a small one here. I'm not sure where the bigger one went. Oh, there, it's right, right. Next to you. All right, excellent, thank right. you. All right, so. I'm just getting these started by hand. Yeah. It's a little tricky. Curious, a curious sort of way to do this, but. Yeah. This is not one of the more intuitive power supply installs that I've ever done. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay. All right. And this is a little bit off. And you're good. Yeah, these screws shouldn't have to hold weight, really. It's more just to keep it still, unless your system's upside down or you're putting, uh, 
your, your top mounting your, your power supply or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, this one's um, not going too far. These little thin screws aren't going to support the weight of this big fat power supply, so. Right, so here we go. So don't do, <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so this looks uh, like we're almost there. Okay. Now, this is the easy part, actually. Yeah, that's the terrifying aspect now, of this. Yeah, the part There's so of many cables, John. I don't even know what to do with them. Yeah, I don't know. We'll get the scissors. I mean, <laughs> that's for starters. You know, we'll get rid of the unnecessary Snip ones. Snip them. So this is why a modular power supply comes into, uh, into play, though. As you can see, if you had to put another 20 cables in there that you aren't using, that would be quite the uh, ordeal. Yes. Okay, so we've got the power supply mounted. Now, uh, to, to actually plug this stuff in, let's do this. We're going to separate all the cables here into the ones we need to plug in now. This is one of them. I'll take that. Um, the red is not one. Red is not. So, no you, so you, card so you yet. Take, the, take the ones that we're not using right, right now, and I'll take those. the ones we are. So what do we see? We need this one. We need SATA we don't need right now. These are all the fan you. cables, getting these out of the way. Right, this is the CPU power cables. We're going to need that. And eh. uh, yeah, this is going to plug into the uh, fan controller in the back. So this one's going to stay on this side for now. So um, let's see, what's going to be the best way to do this? This very large cable is usually the most beastly one. Mm -hmm. So let's turn the case around so the audience can see what we're doing. And um, Beautiful. All right, and uh, our camera folks will let us know if it's not clear inside. Just give us a shout. Um, but here we are. Um, let's have the big power cable um, through. I will guide you up here. Yep, right. right there. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, that's enough uh, cable. I'm plugging that one in. So that's going into the main power connector on the motherboard here. That's going to go in that way. There's only one direction it can go. So that's in. That would be your system power. Right, so that's system power. Now we need the CPU power, which up here is very hard to see. I'm going to tilt the case a little bit so uh, our camera folks can get in there. Um, there are two CPU power connectors here, um, EATX 12 volt and EATX 12 volt 2. We're going to start with the first one, and I don't believe we need the second one um, unless okay. we're overclocking. And if we get to that point in the future, we'll plug it in then. So here that comes. Got that one for you. That's going to go. Doing it by feel here. Yeah, just kind of guess. Keep poking around. Yeah, one way or another it'll go. Let's see. There it goes. So snap. All right, so the main power connectors are in. And what else we have? Um, this guy. That guy. That is the, that's SATA. Um, yes, we need to install the drives first before we do anything with that. Yeah. Um, this one. That's what you wanted, I think. Molex, yeah, that's going to plug in on the, that side of the case. And so then graphics card. Graphic card is later, yeah. So, so we're okay, so, we, so we're good at the moment, I think. So let's turn the case back around. All right. Wait, go that way. Doink. Okay. Doink. Doink. All right, and our giant trail of cables <laughs> follows us. Wherever we go. Right, there we are. So this is the thing. Um, we have this thing here, which... Yeah, this, it's, the, it's a little... Uh, we're a little, a little worried manageable. here. Because it's large, and when we put the glass back on this side of the case, there isn't going to be enough clearance between the glass and this side of the case to do anything with it. So what we need to do is scout out a space for it before things get too out of control, mm. which doesn't look out of control, no, does it? No, no, this is all managed. It looks, it looks, it's all good. I've right. defined this as organized. Yeah, so this is going to be the Molex connector that I was talking about before. Yep. We have a thing for that. Just so we don't forget to plug in the power for that, I'm going to connect those together. Just do so it now. That, Yeah, just do it. Just do it. And this, surprisingly, is really one of the trickier things to do because... These things never quite align. Thank you. There we are. Got it. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, this sort of unwieldy box. Block of stuff. And has things coming out every end, so it's so kind of hard to find what we're probably going to do. So here's the thing. Um, we have a couple of drive bays down here mm -hmm. for hard drives. And what I believe we're going to do for this build is we're only going to put one hard drive in. We were planning on two, but for now we're going to do one um, and use the other space for the fan controller. So where is this? So cable? lesson learned, maybe a slightly larger case for this uh, this, this fan controller because it's it's pretty beefy. Yeah. So what we're going to do is kind of tuck a tuck and roll. Just yeah. Just, there we go. Just get it in there. Get it in there, and then put these out of the way. You'll forget all about it. You'll never know what happened. <laughs> um, so this will be tricky to organize well, but. What I think we should do is you want to hand me one of those zip ties if they're still hanging around. Oh, there are plenty of them. All right. I'm thinking we might actually zip tie something together well, here to keep it... Madness. Yes, keep it... Uh, we may end up snipping this later, but... For now. 
At least it'll keep things sort of under control over here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we'll get we'll get the uh, the nail clippers later and snip that if we need to. Yeah. All right. So that's a lot of cables. It's a lot of cables, but I think we roughly think know what's what. Yep. Okay. So these are actually are um, for the system. Excuse me for the. Um, Case fans that are already in the system, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and this is SATA power, probably for uh, lighting in the case. So we're going to need to plug that into a SATA connector as well. Yes. All right. So next up is, I believe, our drives, or is it our video card? What do we have next in our pile of parts? Oh, our pile of parts. Um, it is drive time. Okay. So let's just take one drive and yeah. put that one in for now. What size we're working with here? Four terabytes. So um, given you know another hour or two of. Uh, uh, Cable routing, we could probably get both drives in there, but for now we're just going to put this one in. Yeah. So, SATA hard drive. Plenty of storage um, as is. Yeah, we're going to put that down over here and see if we can access. <laughs> Under our mess of cables. There we go, the drive tray. Putting so. in a drive is always kind of hilariously, uh, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, Simple. It's like so. It's it's stupid simple. Yes, this is this is actually <laughs> my it into a tray. It always feels so dumb. Right. So you've got on the inside of the tray, you've got these four nubbins here that fit into the screw holes in the side of the drive. You line them up. Primitive, I think, is what I was kind of going for. It's like just yeah, it's just a vested. Just get in there. Yeah. Well, now we say that, and I'm probably going to be here for five minutes trying right. to get it into the uh, the holes. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it's simple. There we go. It just involves usually bending the, uh, yeah, the plastic like a, tray like a, a little dumber, bit. Dumber, rougher thing than it, you'd think. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try that again. One side's in. It's just a question of bending the other far enough for it to clear. Here we are. Now it's fine. Once again, brute force rules the day. Hey, there we are. Here we are. So there we have it. Uh, John, four want storage. Hard... John, make storage. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Did I put that in the correct direction? I believe so. Hope so. All right. So no going back. No going back. So let's put that there for the moment. Now yep. we need to find power for it. More power. All right. Power so... my drive. All right. So this is going to be the power connector. Mm -hmm. This has got an L-shaped connector on it. Yeah, so matches. how do people know? There's all these sorts of things hanging off. If anyone's ever confused, why plug one into what or why choose? It actually doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, with something like a SATA or a Molex connector, whichever one is closest to um, wherever thing you, you want need. it to be. Yeah. And Say this is over here, so it can only reach so far, but you have something else up this mm -hmm. side of the case that needs to connect. That's exactly what's going to happen, because yeah. we have a, another SATA connector up here that we're going to plug this into. So um, Proximity we want to leave. Rules. Yes, that is exactly right. So I'm going to put that on the connector there. All right, and then while we're thinking of it, let's might as well, right? Yeah, just plug this into here. There's, I think we got enough slack that you can yeah. leave that down. So that's going there. Very good. Doink. Okay. Back so now tray. we're gonna put it in the tray, and we will next have to hook up the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I might have a better angle on it. Okay. Yeah. Get in there. Um, yeah, I'll just, just hold the these cabling, out of the way. Right. Our our fan switch there is occupying some space. It certainly is. Let's see. All right. There we go. All right. Perfect. <laughs> that was excellent. All right, so now what we need is a data cable for uh, the uh, hard drive. It needs a SATA cable to connect to the motherboard. So I believe in our pile of fun here, we should have a SATA cable, uh, but SATA data cable. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, this, I believe. That would be it. Okay, so SATA data cable. SATA data cable. If you've built a PC before, you've definitely dealt with these. Yes. Um, this is old, older technology that... Um, you may be familiar with. This kit comes with two, one with an L bend and one with a straight bend. Um, taking a look at that side, probably the straight through, right? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think on the, on, the, on the motherboard side of the... Um, where are we, where are we? On the SAT, the SATAs are probably sticking out the side. I'm gonna turn the case around in any yeah. case. But um, I before I do that, this here is gonna go into the back of the drive. It's gonna be hard, hard to get an angle on this unless the uh, camera can get in real close. But in the back of the drive, we probably could have done this before we installed it, is another one of those L-shaped connectors. We're about teaching lessons here, John. We're, that we're... is true. There we go. So that's our data connector. And um, let's turn the case around. Show sure where we're going to plug it in. Excellent. OK. SATA connectors are going to be over here. So we have um, SATA connectors that are numbered 5, 6, 3, 4, 1, 2. Let's start with 1, which is going to be in the upper left corner over here. And Matt, if you want to feed the SATA cable to my uh, uh, waiting fingers here. 
Which one was that? Where did it go? There's so many cables. Oh, it's this guy here. Oh, here he's hanging here off. He is. Didn't even see him. Okay. Oink. All right. Okay, so how it comes. This is such a nest. It really is. All right. So there's that. Cool. So SATA connected. So we have hard drive connected. We have the boot drive connected up here. Power supply work is mostly done, um, I believe. So many, many cables later. Yes, there is that. All right, so let's do a little cleanup, I guess. Uh, yeah. We're getting close to um, firing it up time. We really are. Yeah. Oh, the video card. How can we forget the video card? Oh. Yeah. I mean, minor detail. No, I didn't forget. We're just yeah. waiting. Right. So with Threadripper, there's no onboard graphics, so you have to have a video card to, uh, um, you know, run the, the graphics on this system. So since we have lots of cool stuff lying around, we have. There it is. Cue dramatic music. Dun, dun, dun. All right. 1080 Ti. A pretty, uh, a pretty good graphics card is what I'd call it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's going to do the job. Yeah, this is a high-end card, gaming. Yeah, a very good match for Threadripper. You name it. So we're going to push this down here, um, and it looks like uh, we should have a clear shot at... Uh, oh, dear. We have to take out some more screws. So to put the video card in, we're going oh, to... Oh, the brackets. To, yes, the, the brackets. So... We get the screwdriver here. I'll just. Part of any good build is a lot of screwing. Yeah, there is that. Let's see. All right. There is that. All right. Uh, question: Which of these do we take out? Let's start with this one. Guessing what's behind door number one. Right. So this is this is going to be a two-slot wide card. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have to take out, I believe, the first two first two slot brackets here. So. There goes one, and number two. And if you would like to unbox the card. I would, I would like right. to unbox the card. It's coming, of course, in a cool case. All right. The presentation is top notch. It actually does make that sound when you open the box. It does, sort of air sealed. Yeah, that wasn't Matt. All right, so welcome to GeForce Gaming. Welcome to GeForce Gaming. So Thank here we you. have GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. This is, um, leading edge mainstream gaming card for playing games at 4K. Uh, running about $750 these days or thereabouts, it's depending on. It's a little on. expensive. It's up there, but this is as good as it gets at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, unless you want to go with a Titan, Titan. or one of the uh, really high-end NVIDIA cards. Um, so let's get this guy in place here. Um, I guess the camera is going to come in over the top of the case, and we'll show you where we're going to put it. So we have um, four PCI Express X X16 slots here, one, two, three, four. From looking at the manual before, we know that this is the primary one, so we're gonna put the card in there. So let's feed this cable out of the way underneath. Line up the card with the slot. Lock it in. And lock it in. Why is John having a hard time with this? There ah, you go. there it goes. Yep, throwing cable ties. There we are. Okay, so we're in place. Take those screws and put them back. Put them back. Simple. For one of the most important components in a, any computer, it is this probably the easiest to install. There is that. Right uh, where's our? Ah, you got it. Great. Yeah, the uh, that has a like a tenth of a millimeter thick yeah, that's not, head that's on not it. Right. So yeah, it's, that's that's for very small stuff. Oops. There we go. And another. Yeah, you know what? One's enough. One's enough. So we're probably going to take this apart again at some point, and we'll be glad we can do that. So this goes like so, and then we put Screw that on. Back. So we've got the shield over the I.O. area here, so we can access the um, display connectors over there. Okay, looking good. So power connectors for the video card. So we're going to stand the case up again. And Matt, if you would be so kind as to feed me these connectors once I figure out where they go. Oh, happily. All right. Uh, how about to the bottom here? Yeah, that looks good. Red. Red. Gaming red. All right. So. Wouldn't be gaming without it. So here we have two sets of power connectors. Um, they're what are called six plus two, six pins and two pins, depending on what the connector is on the video card, you may use the eight of them combined together into one unit, like we will here. Whoops. Power. Power on. And I should note the uh, card did come with a um, 
DisplayPort cable. So there we go. <laughs> came with a DisplayPort to uh, DVI for all ah. your DVI needs. Yeah, we won't be using that. <laughs> and then the six pin. What do you, you mean? Just leave these two off. Goes in here. All right. GeForce powered up. All right. So we are good on the video card front, I believe. Now, if we were to install a second card, we'd go underneath here and we would connect them via a bridge. Right. Um, we also got a bracket for keeping some wobble steady that came with the case, I think. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, where would we attach that? I'm not quite sure. I'm not uh, sure either. It's a little cramped. Hmm. Where is that? Let me take a quick peek at it. Do you have it over there? Uh, so basically, yes. the case um, came with a... Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? All right, we're going to let it go. Somewhere. Um, it's somewhere yeah, but there. basically there's a bracket that lets you support the card from bottom to top or from here to the front to keep it from wobbling if you move the case around a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to let that go and start uh, cleaning up the table here because I think we're ready for uh, uh, showtime. Whoa. All right. So quick. Oh. So this. Oh, a gigabit Ethernet. We can't forget that. Gigabit Ethernet card. We, you know, we're probably not going to install this because we don't have a Gigabit Ethernet connection here and we would have to take that bracket off again. Right. But if you are so inclined, um, ASUS provided a Gigabit Ethernet card. Uh, it's going to be a 10 Gigabit Ethernet right. card not with the board, gigabit. which would go into one of the PCI Express or PCI Express. Um, I believe this is this X1 or is it X4? Um, let's take a look. No, it's X4. So it would go into one of the large uh, PCI Express slots. So um, when we actually test this board and run a review of it, we'll definitely install this. But for today, we don't have a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection here, so nope. not happening. So, but good to know it's there. That's part of the reason you spend this kind of money on this board. So um, we are going to clean up the table. We're going to keep one of these uh, Wi-Fi antennas here. But everything else can come everything off. Else can get. Everything else can get. Because here's where it's going to get hairy. So many cable ties. Right. We used a grand total of two. <laughs> there we go. Well, we're not done yet. Um, we're not. It's true. Yeah, we may end up using more than that before we're done. So, I'm looking at the cables that are hanging up behind the uh, chassis here. Of which there are plenty. Of which there are plenty. And um, trying to figure out which of them still need to be connected to something. We have here a, um, a USB connector, uh, which would go into a USB header on the motherboard. And this is coming off of the um, fan hub that we mm -hmm. installed in the bottom left corner of the case. So I'm going to go and snake that through here, and we'll have to figure out where that goes. Um, you can just feed that through. And everything Probably else a here more is... Probably more slack than we needed, honestly. Yeah, that's fine. We'll shove it back through when the right. time comes, yeah. Um, but everything else behind here, and you can see when we turn the chassis, is a lot of cable. It's going to have to be... So many cables. ...stuffed into um, a space and restrained before we can put the side on. Yeah, I'm genuinely... Right now, I'm not sure the case side is going to close over the... The mound of oh, cables. Oh, it won't. Yeah, um, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, this cluster of cables here is going to have to go somewhere that's else. That's a problem. Yeah, it's too thick for the uh, um, the case side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather this up, put this through here. <laughs> Toss it in. That's going in there. So ordinarily, this is why you buy a case with one glass side and one side to hide all this Because no, no one wants, wants to, to see, see this. this. Nope. Least of all uh, your correspondence here. So we're going to put those in there. So that should clear. That should be okay. This bunch over here is all um, yeah. bound together um, as it came from the factory, and that's not going to work. So let's see how we can manage that. I yeah, we did this on the fly. Obviously not an optimal sort of <laughs> routing situation. Yeah. But, so, yeah. yeah, so these are actually zip-tied together, so I think we may have to clip that. Um, all right, so we had a little bit of a fade there while we did some cable rerouting. You'll notice that the cables are pretty flat now because there's it's not, just a lot not of much clearance. Yeah, so yeah, so do what we could. Yeah, so we got it now. The um, side panel's going on there. If you want to put those on, I mean, with a little more time, we would probably um, route things a little closer. So we're just going to put these on, not super tight, just finger tight. Unfortunately, it's tinted glass, so you can't see all the cables over there too Genius. readily unless you look. All right. Don't look, just don't look too hard. So that's the right side of the case, and again, why I would prefer a glass case with a solid right side. Right. Right. All right. Flip it up. Turn around. All right. Got bada that. bing, bada boom. All right. We still have this cable, which needs to go somewhere, so I'm going to take a quick peek inside of here, look for a uh, USB connector that I can go into. Scouting, scouting. And not seeing one. So we are going to have to 
find a splitting solution of some kind later on for this. This is just a lighting situation, sure. so I don't think, um, or a fan communication situation, so we're going to put that on the side for the moment until we can sort that out. But that will resolve itself. What we, we got to do? CPU fan one. Yeah, yeah. this is more. No. Uh, you know, what we could do is we could just detach the. Uh, USB from the front panel USB. We could. But we're going to leave it for now. Just leave it. All right, so I'm going to go get the, the glass for this side. All right. Almost there. All right. Handle with care. Okay, so you want to grab those. Whoa. All right, you've got the bottom there, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this side goes on much more easily. Yeah, no uh, cables fighting, fighting back against us, so. All right. that side. Okay. Hey. We have a completed box now. Question is, will it boot? Will it boot? All right. So let's make some room for a monitor. A Here moment of truth, as they say. All right. I will. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about it. All right, so here we go. We have a whole bunch Famous of junk. Famous last words, probably. There we go. We have a whole bunch of junk here we need to plug in. So if you would like to put that into a USB port in the back. Well, it's a USB port. That, there we go. That's going to be our mouse cable. I'm just going to hook up the monitor here. We have a nice uh, 2560 by 1440 ASUS uh, FreeSync monitor here. Yeah, I got your mouse. You got your mouse. All right. We also have a keyboard. Um, it's the New Yorker coming through on us. Keyboard. If you would be Boink. so kind of to plug in a couple of those, uh, just a few USBs, and final cable will be a HDMI cable for hooking up the monitor to the GeForce card. Da, 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 da. All right. So, um, not sure if the monitor's powered up. Let's take a look over there. Do, do, do. Nope, looks like we got power. All right. And of course. Ah, yes, the power connector. System power, probably good. We do need to plug it in. That, yeah. That Threadripper does not do it wireless does not power. It's not self power. That. So let's have that. I'm put Find that me a plug. I will do so. Okay. So do you see any pretty Journal, lights? please. I don't, but I have not flipped the switch yet. All right, let me take a look in the back, I'm or gonna, the front I'm door gonna, here, rather. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to flip. I don't see anything happening, so you may need to throw the switch and hit power up, and let's see what happens. I hear. I hear, I hear and I see. I see red I see fans, fans in the front. I see GTX lights. I see RAM lights. I see no lights up top, which is the reason we need to plug in that other cable, right, I believe. We, we knew that. But um, let's take a look. Do we have anything on the monitor? I'm happy with the RAM lights, you know? That's all I wanted. <laughs> Aha! So that's the Acer. Uh, oh, come on. Wait a minute. Come on. Here we go. Did we do the thing? We got a flash. We have BIOS. Success. Yes, there we That's go. That's the sound of success, folks. All right. So, um, unless you want to hang around for uh, another thrilling four, Windows install, that would be great. <laughs> we um, we will be putting Windows on the Threadripper machine, benchmarking, and getting back to you in uh, another uh, few days. Yeah. So um, put this thing through its paces. Yeah. So Threadripper goes on sale August tenth. That would be when you're viewing this, and we should have a review of it up at the same time. And we will be also featuring this PC in future editions of Random Access. I'm sure. So, wow. Um, where's that uh, ROG coaster? <laughs> That's a great question. That was the most important part of this build. And I, oh, wait. Right, there it goes. I would so never misplace the ROG right, so coaster. So we're going we're gonna to go get a beer. Yeah. And we actually, we're going to get two beers and put them both on the ROG coaster. Just drink it right, right on top there. of here. No damage will come to it that way, I'm sure. There we um, go. If you need any more of these tchotchkes, uh, you know where to find them. Yeah. We There's an extra hard drive. <laughs> There's so much extra stuff. Right, there we go. So we are... We are we're golden. We're this golden. is cruising. All right, so we've got a 32, uh, excuse me, a 16 core, 32 thread CPU going here. Um, NVMe SSD, 32 gigs of RAM, and RGB may, RAM. RGB RAM, right? And we may even get the pretty lights on top to work, you know, by the next time that you see us. So yeah. I'm John Burek. This is Matt Buzzy. Thanks we for were, watching. Hope you enjoyed the Threadripper build. See you soon. Take care.